Making a webshop these days is easy and in this tutorial I will show you from start to finish how to create your own webshop using WordPress and WooCommerce and start selling products. This video is both for people that already have a WordPress website and want to extend it with a webshop as for people that want to create a webshop from scratch. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. If you start from scratch I will show you how to get your own free domain name and web hosting. Then we will install WordPress. WordPress is the most powerful website builder in the world and it covers more than 43% of the websites on the internet. After installing WordPress, we will install WooCommerce, an amazing free plugin that will turn your website into a webshop and enable you to sell products on the internet. Then we will create six different kinds of products. We start with a simple product, a product with only one option, in this case, a black Nike hoodie. But it can also be glasses or a cap, as long as there's only one option of the product. Next, we'll create a variable product, in this case, a t-shirt with multiple sizes, multiple colors. And if I select a certain color like this, at once you see an image of that product. If I go for a white t-shirt, you see the white variation over here. You can configure each variation. So if you buy an XL version of the t-shirt, it will cost you $39.99. If you buy an L version, it costs you $29.99. And of course, you can also change the stock per variation. So it's one product with multiple variations. The third product is a digital product. In this case, it's a coaching call. It can also be any service that you offer. The fourth product is a digital downloadable product. In this case, an ebook. It can also be a stock photo or any digital product that you want to sell. I'll teach you how to create an affiliate product and affiliate marketing is promoting other people's products in exchange for a commission. So if I would promote Elementor Pro and people click over here, my unique affiliate link, and they buy Elementor Pro, I get a commission. And last, I'll show you how to create a group product so people can buy multiple products on one page. For instance, one PlayStation with three extra controllers, two docking stations, and one headphone. This is also a great option when you want to sell food on your website. But for each product we will create, we'll talk about configuration options like the price, discount, schedule discount for a certain time, inventory, categories and subcategories. We're going to talk about tags, images, the short and the long description of your product. I will also show you how you can use ChatGPT to help you with all these settings based on the information that you give about the product. After we have created six different kinds of products, we'll make our webshop look better. We can adjust the amount of columns we want to show. We can change the display, change the aspect ratio of the images, decide what and what not to display. We can even change the colors in the website with a few clicks or give our website a dark look. With everything you learn in this tutorial, you can have an end result like this. Or like this one. Or this one. We will make sure that the whole buying process on your website is really smooth and easy for your customers. So I see something I like. I click on add to cart then I can view the cart. I can also view the cart over here. I browse, I can select options or I can select the turquoise switch, add it to the cart. Maybe I'd like to have a cover. I go for this one, add it to the cart, a nice cover. Then I can click over here and view the cart. Then over here, I can decide to change the amount. So maybe I want to have two PlayStations and two Nintendo Switches and three console cases. I click on update cart. There I go. If I'm happy with what I bought, I go to the checkout, I can fill in my details and I can pay over here. Click on pay now and then the products will be shipped to my address. That's how easy it is. We can also use a sidebar with widgets that will help visitors to browse through your products. For instance, visitors can search for products. They can filter your products by price, browse through your categories and subcategories. You can highlight certain products and when visitors add something to the cart, they will see a widget with their current cart status. You can even create advanced filters like these. So visitors can browse through your website, add products to the cart, view the cart, and here they see an overview of everything they have in their cart. We will show a message that when they spend $80 more, they get free shipping and this can really boost your sales. Right now they pay $14.95, but when they increase the products, spend $80 extra, they get free shipping. I'll show you how to add coupon codes. We can apply it over here. And now we get 20% discounts. And coupon codes are also a great way to boost your sales for new visitors and returning visitors. You can create coupon codes with free shipping, discounts in dollars or in your particular currency, in percentage, 
and also set limitations like spending at least $35 for a coupon code to work or create a coupon code for a specific product or make sure that the coupon code can only be used one time. We will dive deep into that subject. We'll also automate the whole shipping process based on the total weight of the order or based on the price, based on where people live and everything will be automated. So right now when I ship this to the United States, I pay $12.95. But when I want to ship this to the Netherlands, for instance, I need to pay $16.95. And what I also see, I need to spend more money to get free shipping when I ship things to the Netherlands. So when it comes to shipping, you have a lot of flexibility to adjust it to your wishes. We'll talk about taxes and not the state taxes, but about calculating taxes for your buyers. And I'll show you how you can set it up manually for each country, for a certain state, normal taxes rates, reduced rates, and I will show you how to automate the whole process. So WooCommerce will take care of it for you. And then we will talk about payment methods so that people on your website can pay using credit card, PayPal, Klarna, Afterpay, you name it. So when people go from your cart to the checkout page, they can fill in their details, pay with their preferred payment method. And when everything is automated, visitors can buy products on your website and the money goes to your bank account. And it's your job to send the right products to the right address. A WooCommerce will take care of everything else. We'll talk about handling incoming orders and how to adjust the order confirmation emails your buyers will get. I'll show you how to create amazing headers for your website and I'll show you how to create an advanced search filter so people can search all the products on your website with ease. And of course, we'll make sure that your website is optimized for all devices. Besides the header, I'll also show you how you can create a footer and you can decide if you want to display products on your homepage like this or to create a custom homepage like this using Elementor and I'll show you how you need to do that. Or you can download and import my pre-made template for free. That's not all, there are also a lot of pre-made WooCommerce websites pre-made for you that you can import for free and I will show you how you can do that. So you just choose the store you like, you select it and you import it. All your products will still be there and in that way you can save yourself a lot of time because then you don't have to create it yourself. If you don't like it, I will show you how to put it back to the way it was. Last but not least, I will show you how to deal with pages like privacy policy, terms and conditions, cookie policy, return policy and disclaimers. So when you follow all the steps in this tutorial, you will be able to sell products in your neighborhood, in your country and even in the whole wide world. world, world, world. In the description of this video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part in the tutorial, you can click on one of those timestamps and you go directly to that part of the tutorial. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings here at YouTube, playback speed, slow down the speed of this tutorial. And if you want to go back a few seconds in the video, just hit the left arrow on your keyboard and you'll go back five seconds in the video. If you can appreciate that I created this video for free, then please like this video. This will help me out a lot and mean a lot to me. And feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress, WooCommerce and affiliate marketing related tutorials. Now let's talk about the three steps we will take in order to create an amazing web shop. So first you get your free domain name and we will get web hosting. What is a domain name? A domain name is the address of your website. Web hosting is a special computer that's turned on 24 seven that contains all your files, all your emails, all your images, all the content on your website. So with your free domain name and web hosting, you are visible on the internet. Then we will install WordPress and WordPress is completely free. It's the best tool to create a website without having to know anything about coding because WordPress is doing all the hard stuff for you. And the third thing, we will create our e-commerce website. And for the website we will make, people can charge thousands of dollars, but I will show you for free how you can do it yourself. If you already have a domain and web hosting, you can do two things. You can migrate your current website to this amazing web hosting platform. I have a tutorial here that can show you step by step how you can do that. And if you already have installed WordPress, you can skip step two and go directly to step three. And I will show you right now where you need to go in the tutorial in order to follow along from that point on. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. So in order to get your free domain and web hosting, we need to go to webhosting33.com. Hit enter. I love hosting her and I'm not the only one. If you take a look at all the reviews at Trustpilot, you see that people are really excited about hosting her. And if you take a look at the Google Trends, you see the word is spreading. More and more people are getting into hosting her and they're really excited, just as I am. So if you want to get started, we click on start now and you see there are four plans. And I can tell you all the plans are really fast. And it's maybe a little bit overwhelming, four different plans, but I will show you which plan is right for you. You can get started with one website and then you pay less than $2 per month. The only thing is you don't get a free domain name with this plan. If you take a look at the most popular plan, the WordPress starter plan, you can create up to 100 websites in this plan. You have 100 gigabyte of SSD storage, which is more than enough. And you can have up to 25,000 visits per month. 
And over here, you see you get your free domain. The big difference between the WordPress starter plan and the business WordPress plan is that you can have more gigabyte storage, but I don't think you need those extra 100 gigabytes. I think this is enough for 100 websites, but you can have more monthly visits, but you can always upgrade later. So when you reach 25,000 visits per month, you can upgrade to the business WordPress plan. And if you know already, you want to start an agency, you want to create 50 websites in the first year, then I suggest the cloud startup. And the crazy thing is this is really affordable for cloud hosting. As I said, you can always upgrade later. And two more important things to say, all plans are blazing fast. The only thing is the higher the plan, the more websites you can have up and running at the same time and still maintain the super fast speed of your websites. So if you know you want to create 50 websites in the first year, then I definitely suggest you go for the cloud startup. But if you want to create one website or two or maybe five or 10, I suggest you go with the WordPress starter plan. And then when you reach 25,000 visits per month, and I hope that will be the case for you, you can always upgrade later. And the second thing I want to tell you, there is a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you somehow, I don't know why, but if you somehow would not like the service, you can get your money back. No questions asked. So it's totally risk free. And I will show you step by step how you can create your first website. So I select the WordPress starter plan. I click on select. And now we can take a look at the amount of discount we get. And the great thing with hosting is if you are really sure you want to go for a few years with your first website, you can get the discount of $2.99 for four years, for 48 months. And that will save you $432. And then after those four years, you start to pay $6.99, which is still super affordable for a web hosting plan that can hold 100 websites. If you just want to start with two years or one year, you can click over here. And then in your first year, you just pay $2.99 per month. And then you're still going to create 100 websites. And after that first year, you start to pay $8.99 per month. So the longer the first period, the more discount you will get when you renew your plan. So if you have the budget and you want to get the most discount possible, you can go for the 48 months. And after those 48 months, you start to pay around $7 per month instead of $9. But wait, there is more. If you scroll down over here, you see have a coupon code. And if you fill in 30 and you click on apply, you get even more discount. So I scroll up again. Now you see $2.69 for the first 48 months or 24 months or 12 months. I go for 12 months. I scroll down and I need to create an account. So I will fill in my email address over here. And of course you need to have access to this account. Then I scroll down a bit further. And the great thing is with Hostinger, you have local payment methods. So if I'm from the Netherlands and I go to Hostinger, I can pay with IDEAL, which is in the Netherlands, the main payment method. If you're from India, you also have local payment methods. And that's the great thing about Hostinger. Depending on where you come from, there are more payment methods. I want to pay with credit card. And let's see what we have over here. We have the WordPress starter plan for 12 months. We can have up to 100 websites. Our first domain is completely free instead of $10. We get a lot of discount. And the total amount I have to pay is just $32.29. It can be that it's a little bit more because of the taxes, depending on where you come from. But this is so affordable. So what I will do, I'll scroll down. I will fill in my credit card details. And as you see, a 30 day money back guarantee. And I click on submit secure payment. It's redirecting us to the control panel. Now we need to create a password for our hosting account. We need to confirm our password. And then I click on confirm. Now they are going to ask a few questions. I click on start now. And then I want to skip those questions. So I click on skip. I want to create my first WordPress account. So I can use my administrator email and then I need to create a password and then I click on continue. I don't want to have those plugins on my WordPress website. I want to start from scratch. So I click on skip. I will manage plugins later. I don't need to have a certain look. I want to start from scratch. So I scroll down, I click on skip. I don't need a template. Now I can claim my free domain name. So I click over here and then I select my domain name. I want to go for a .com. You see all those extensions they have. I go for .com and if it's already taken, be creative with another domain name because you definitely want to have a .com domain name, especially when you're into international business. If you're from a local business, check out if your country extension is over here, but I want to go for .com and then I can enter my desired domain name. I go for game consoles with a Z .com. Let's see if it's still available. I click on search and it is available. So I click on continue. And now WordPress will be installed on this brand new domain name, which is completely free. I click on finish setup. And then I need to fill in some details for my 
domain name. The question is, where do you come from? I'm from the Netherlands. And did you buy this web hosting personally or because you're a company? I choose personal. So I click on next step. And then I need to fill in my details over here. So there I go. My first name, my last name, my email. In the Netherlands, I'm from South Holland. My city, my address, space, and my phone number. And then I click on finish registration. Now our domain will be registered. And the great thing is this is crazy with Hostinger. Automatically your information, your email and your phone number, which you just filled in is secure. It's, it's hidden. It cannot be seen by companies that want to advertise to you, that want to call you. That's called domain privacy. And with Hostinger, that is free. With other web hosting companies, this can cost $20 per year. Here it's free. So now we can edit our website, it's live already, or we can go to the control panel. Well, I first want to go to the control panel, so I click on manage site. Then I want to go to the WordPress dashboard, and maybe this looks overwhelming, but you're gonna be fine. We don't have to spend a lot of time over here. And the more you do, the easier it becomes. I really like this layout. So you click on WordPress dashboard. And what I want to do, I want to force the HTTPS. So our website will be secure like this. So I turn that on and it's for this domain name. So I click on install SSL and it says your SSL is being installed for your domain name in the background. HTTPS will be automatically forced on your domain. Then we click here on edit a website and ladies and gentlemen, look at this. We will be redirected to our own brand new domain name with web hosting with WordPress installed on it. Great. So now we are logged in. You just need to close this, click on the WordPress logo. Okay, then we need to go to our dashboard. Look at this. This is the back end of our website. This is what we will see when we are logged in. And when you're logged in, you can adjust things in your website. If you click over here on the house, you go to the front end of your website and you see you are live already. Your website is secure. So everybody that goes to your domain at this moment will see this over here. And that means you are live. We have this bar over here. That means that you're logged in. And when you want to go to the back end of your website, just click over here on your domain link. Let me show you around a little bit. When you use WordPress and use WordPress plugins, you will have updates. So if I click on updates right now, there's a plugin that needs an update. So I can select it and I can update the plugin. Every time there's an update, you will see it over here. Or when you're on the front end, you'll see a one over here. I go back to the back end. We can create blog posts. We can upload PDFs, images, Word documents, videos. We can create pages, the homepage, the about page. People can leave comments on your pages or blog posts or products if you have them. And here you can moderate those. Let me skip this for now. If I go to plugins, I see there's a plugin called WP Forms Lite. And some plugins, when they're active, also appear here at the left hand. This one, for instance. Then we have appearance. We can change the look and feel of our website. We can add users so we can create a user that only can write blog posts on our websites or only moderate our posts or moderate the information we have on our website. We have our WordPress settings and also this is a plugin. I like to work in a clean environment. Right now, this area is clean. It helps me to be productive, not to be distracted. And the same thing goes for WordPress. Right now, I think it's overwhelming. So what I will show you, I will show you how to clean up your WordPress website. And meanwhile, we will configure a few things. In order to do that, I need to I make sure I'm here at the dashboard and I want to dismiss this message. Then all this stuff over here, I don't need it. So I go to the screen options and I uncheck them all. Then I go to all the plugins. Click here, so I select all the plugins and then I go to the bulk actions. And that means I can adjust everything at once, everything I've selected, bulk actions deactivate all plugins and in order to do that i need to click on apply then i select them again bulk actions delete apply hit enter or say okay and there they go now if i go to the website and i go to this blog post it's on every wordpress installation if i click on it look at this you go to your domain name and then question mark p equals one i don't like that and google does not like it either so I need to go to the back end. I want to change the way it is displayed. So I go to the settings, permalinks, and I change the permalink structure from plain to 
post name. I scroll down and I click on save the changes. Now, if I go to the website and I click on hello world, look at this looks so much better. Hello world. What else can we do right now? It says this post is created by hello at 30 corpse.com. I want to change that in order to do that. I go over here and I edit my profile. You can change the look and feel of the backend. I like the default one. I scroll down a bit and I want to fill in my first name over here, 30 and my last name over here. And then here at display name publicity, I want to change it to my first and last name. So if I select that, look at this. Now it says how the 30 corpus look right now. We don't see an image over here. If you want that, let me first update my profile. If I scroll down, look at this, I can have a profile picture. It needs to be linked to my Graviter account. So in order to have an image over here, you need to create a Graviter account. It costs around $50 per month, but it's really worth it. No, just kidding. It's free. Right mouse click, open link and a new tab. Then you can create your Graviter and then you need to upload an image. And when you do that, it will appear on multiple places in your website, but right now only over here. I update my profile. So now it says, how do you further corpus look? And I see my image. What I want to do, I want to go to settings general. Since our website is secure, I want to have an S over here. So HTTPS, HTTPS. I scroll down and I need to save the changes and then I need to log in again, probably. So I lose, use my email address, which I use to sign up for my WordPress website. The information we have filled in over here and my password. Then I scroll down. I can change the site language to something else and I can change this time zone. So I want to change it to my city. I live near Amsterdam. So you can just hit a big city and you can also take a look over here, which one you can decide. And then summertime, winter time, everything will be changed automatically. How do you want to display your date? I can say 22, 12, 27. You can choose one. I use this one and the time format. I like to work with AM and PM in capitals. So I select this one. My week starts on Monday and I click on save changes. Great. A really important part of your website is the site title. So let me show you how to create a site title that will convert well and that will help you to be found better on the internet. Let's open a new tab and search for photography Amsterdam. I skip the ads. And it says over here, Amsterdam for photography lovers. So what I see, I search for photography, Amsterdam, and I see Amsterdam over here and photography, both of the keywords that I search on are found in this title. What you see over here is created over here. So your site title is really important. Don't say welcome to this website because people that want to find you do not search for welcome to this website. Now they search for something specific, photography, Amsterdam, web design, Rotterdam. So make sure that the keywords you want to be found on are in your title. So I want to sell products. So what I will search for over here is Xbox series X. Let's see how it looks. Xbox series X, Microsoft Xbox series I want to buy it. Okay. And PS five. Will be probably a few comparison titles PlayStation 5 versus the Xbox Series X. So I can get inspired by this. So, what I want to do, I want to show people exactly what they're searching for. And in my case, it is buy the, the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5 in stock. And then I can say over here, the tagline, just not a WordPress website. I can say we deliver globally within a week. It's quite a promise, but if you can live up to that promise, you can place over here. It's a tagline. It's not visible in the website, at least not in the, the, at least not in the website we are going to make. You can also leave this empty, but I want to give some additional information. So really important, the site title. I want to be found on Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 because that's what I'm selling. And I want to say that it is in stock. So when people search for my website, they will see that title over here and they can see at once, hey, we can buy that here and it is in stock. 
So that's how you create a site title with keywords. I scroll down, I save the changes and I go to my website. Right now, our website looks ugly. We can make it look better. And what we'll do for that, we need a certain theme for that. What is a theme? A theme decides the look and feel of your website and every theme has their own functionalities. There are free themes and there are premium themes. Well, by default, a WordPress is installed with around 30 themes. And I want to show you what will change when it comes to the look and feel when you change the theme. So let's change the theme and see what happens. So right now we make use of a standard WordPress theme. So we have the title over here, we have a button over here and a footer. So let me show you what we can do. If I go to the back end and I go to appearance themes, this is the active theme 2023. If I select another theme, look what happens. The look changes, the colors, the content goes to a different place. So we still have the title and in, with this theme, we also have the subtitle, the tagline. And then over here, it looks different than the other theme. And that's what a theme does. It changes the look and feel of your website. And every theme has their own specific functionalities. As I said, there are free themes, as you see right now. And there are premium themes. And most of the time, premium themes are better. They have more functionalities. It is easier to work with. But there's a great but. That sounds weird. Actually not. But there is a theme, a free theme with premium functionalities. And I try, this is my work. I try a lot of themes. I want to know what's the best for me, for my websites, for my clients' websites, and throughout all the themes I used, and I'm still looking around for the best themes. This one is the best one at this moment of recording, the Bloxy theme. You can do so many amazing things with it. There's a pro version, but in this video, we will only use the free version. And what you can do with it is, is amazing. So let me show you how we can get the free Bloxy theme. So one of my hobbies is finding out which is the best theme, trying out a lot of themes. And I found the best one, which is free. And you can find it here at 30corp.com forward slash Bloxy. Hit enter and there you can download the Bloxy theme. There's a pro version. We're going to go with the free version. So I click on free download. We can download it over here. Then I can go to my website, to the back end, to appearance themes, add new, upload a theme and I can drag it over here and then I can click on install now or I go to themes, add new and search over here for Bloxy and there it is. So I click on install, activate and now I need to install the Bloxy companion so I click over here. Awesome. Great. So now if I go to the website, it looks different. It still doesn't look that appealing, but it looks much better. And now we're going to make this look so much better. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is really important to have a logo for your website and you can outsource it. So you can let someone else create a logo. I highly advise you do that. But if you're starting out and you want to do things yourself just to get things up and running, I have a few beautiful tutorials for you. Let me show you which one you can follow. And I'm only talking about free tools. So right now we see this title over here and I prefer not to have a title over here, but a logo. Well, there are a lot of ways to get a logo. You can outsource it or you can do it yourself through multiple ways, Photoshop, Canva, a few other tools. So if you would go to 30corp.com forward slash Canva, hit enter. You can do it for free over here. Let me show you. If you go to youtube.com and you search for 30 logo Canva, there's a tutorial two months ago on how to create a logo, it's 22 minutes, or you can use this one already five years old, but it's still working or this one with a transparent background. Or if you search for 30 logo Photoshop, maybe remove Canva. Then also I show you how to create a logo using, let me see, this is not one. Oh, I forgot. I removed that one because it was not the WordPress related. So uh, you can also search for logo Photoshop and someone else will teach you how to create a logo in Photoshop. 
So I re already made my logo and what I want to tell you, if you want to follow along in this tutorial and use the same images I use, then go to ferdicorp.com forward slash images. Hit enter and there you go. I open them and I bring them to the desktop. I click on it and then I go to miscellaneous game consoles and there I have a logo in color, a logo in white, and a fave icon. So I will use those, but as I said, you can create your own logo through Photoshop, through Canva, or outsource it. Whatever you want to do, it's your party. So celebrate it as you like. Okay, we'll talk about configuring the Bloxy theme later. But right now, I want to adjust a few small things and then we're going to create a few products in our website. So let's let's adjust a few things and then we create products. So let's adjust a few things and then we create uh, the product. So the first thing we'll do, we'll adjust a few things. And then I think by now you know what we're going to do. Yes, let's go. So I want to upload my logo over here. How can I do that? I go to the customizer and those are settings from the Bloxy theme. And it's really easy what I can do. I can hover over here, click on the three dots, and then I directly go to the logo part and I click on select a logo. Then I select files over here. So I select files from my computer. Then I go to the desktop, number six, game consoles. And I can also say command A or control A on the PC. And then I open everything. And now I select the colored logo. And if you want to, you can create spaces over here, copy the title, place it in the alt text and the description. That's what I do with all my images. And I select it and there you go. Well, below there's a text. I don't want the text. So over here, the site title, I don't want to display that only the logo. And then over here, I can change the height of the logo. So if I would say 30, it looks like that. So let's see. I think 40 is great. I think the, low, the the height of this header is really high. So I click on the main row and I change the height to something like 80 or if you dare to do that, 70. Yes. So since we have a logo, let's also go for a fave icon. How can we do that? I go back and I go back. I scroll down all the way to site identity. And I can select my site icon over here. I already uploaded it. It is this one. It needs to be square and at least 100 by 100 pixels. So minus 240 by 240. I click on select, skip the cropping, and there you go. So now if I would go to tesla.com and to apple.com at once, I know, hey, wait a minute. I need to go back to this awesome game consoles website. Needs to be in PNG and with a PNG you also can have a transparent background. Right now I chose a white one, but you can also make it transparent. Maybe I should do that. I will be back with you in a second. So I change the image, upload files, select files, I go to my desktop, select, skip the cropping, and that's better. Now if I go to a different tab, that looks better. So I keep on learning so while making tutorials. I close this and that looks a little bit better. Okay. What else? I want to change the, the colors over here. So I go to the customizer again to the colors and there are a lot of color palettes. And if I change it to the green one, this becomes green. You see there's a color, second color, dark colors. So you can also make the website dark like this. Look at this. Wow. I'm not saying that those colors match, match. Not, not at all. But if I would change the logo to a greenish one, you can have a dark website and all based on this color palette. I really like it. I want to go with a, a light website. So I go back to the first one, palette one. And I want to change the colors. Well, there's a tool in Chrome. It's called the Color Pick Eyedropper. You can Google it and then I grab the first color, copy, escape, and I paste it over here. Then there's the second color. 
orange one. I copy it and I place it over here. Then I want to grab this one, paste it over here, but make it a lot darker. And also over here, but not that dark. Okay, that's fine for me. Great, so when I hover over here, it becomes orange. And that's exactly what I want. So those colors of my logo are now used in the whole website. And we will see that a lot when we start to build our website. So, so far, so good. Congratulations with what you have achieved so far. Now we're going to do something fun. It is time to turn our website into a web shop. And we need a plugin for that. It's a free plugin. It's called WooCommerce. It's such a popular WordPress plugin, one of the most popular ones. And it will turn your website into a web shop. And it's free. It's amazing. I will show you step by step how to make use of it. But first, we're going to download it. Let me show you how. So in order to download WooCommerce, we go to the back end of our website to plugins, add new. And then over here, I search for WooCommerce. I don't have to hit enter automatically. It will refresh. It has more than 5 million installations and 5 million is the cap. So maybe it already has 20 million installations, a lot of likes and reviews, positive reviews updated two days ago and compatible with my current version of WordPress. And there is such a beautiful animation over here. Every time I see it, it makes me emotional. <laughs> so let's click on install now. I can get rid of it. So I don't have to see it again. Activate. So now I don't have to see this and become emotional again. So I need to fill in some details over here. If you don't see this, what you can do then is go to WooCommerce status, then to the tab tools, scroll down and go for the Create default WooCommerce pages. Click on create pages. Yes. Next, you go to the WooCommerce settings, then to the help area over here, setup wizard, click over here. Now you can run it. So where is this web shop based? Well, mine is based in the Netherlands. This is my address. And I use this email address. Well, that's not a correct one. This one is. I don't need tips. I click on continue. No, thank you. I think WooCommerce is so good already. I'm going to sell electronics. So if you see something over here, and if you don't see it, you can say other and describe it. Continue. I'm going to sell physical products and downloadable products because I want to show you every single product you can make in WooCommerce. Continue. I expect to sell between 11 and 100 products and I'm not selling somewhere else. It's not a website for a client. So I click on continue. And I don't add recommendation business features to my site. Continue. So that is it. Now it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to start adding products to our website. Let me give you a beautiful introduction about different kind of products there are. But first, let me go to the homepage. And when I see this homepage, uh, there's one more thing I want to show you before we're going to create our first product. So over here, I see four pages. The first one is the cart page. When people add products to their cart, it will be seen over here. The second one is the checkout. When people have products in their cart and they go to the checkout, they will go over here. The third one is my account. When people buy things, they can get invoices over here and see what they have ordered change details over here and then the fourth one is the shop page here all the products will be displayed right now we don't have products if i click over here i go to the home page and it says ready to publish your first post get started over here but what i want to show over here on the home page is my shop page so in order to do that i go to the customizer scroll down go to the home page settings and i change it from your latest post to a static page and then of course I select the shop page. Awesome. 
Awesome. Publish. Close it. So at our homepage, we see the shop and there are no products yet found. So now it is time to create our first product. I believe it's time to make some fun in this tutorial. What do I mean by that? We're going to create products for me. I love this part of the tutorial to make this and hope you like to watch it. So maybe great time to ask you if you haven't done so yet, please like this video every night before I go to sleep. I check the amount of likes I got the day and when I do not get a lot of likes, which almost never happens, but then I sleep very bad and I don't want that. So if you give me the like, and a lot of other people do that then I get more likes and then I sleep better. Unless the Kim gets better. Unless the kids come at night and wake us up a few times. But that's another story for another time when I will create a YouTube channel about how to be a parent, even though I have no clue, but I love them and I care for them and I do my best and I read books about how to be a better father. If I don't talk as long as this, I make this shorter, these, these spaces in between where I talk you to face to face, then I could spend more time with them. So maybe I should do less blah, blah, blah and talk about what we're talking about. So what we're talking about is how to create our first product and it's called a simple product. Let's go. So there are a few ways how we can create a new product. We can hover over here and go for a new product or we can go to the back end. Really quick, let me get rid of this so it's clean. Then I go to products, add new, or I go to all products. And then I click on create product. Well, I feel like going to the homepage, hovering over new and clicking on product. Okay. If you see something else than what you see on my screen, then you need to do something. WooCommerce is working on a new page builder, a new, a new editor over here. And for the first coming year, it's not that good. So if you want to get rid of that, you go to WooCommerce settings, advanced, then features, and then turn these off. New product editor, save the changes. And now when you create a new product, it should look exactly like this. When the new editor really becomes the, the standard, then I will make a new tutorial about this and you can watch it over here. But right now you'll be fine with this amazing editor. So the first thing we need to do is create a product name. So I want to sell a hoodie, a simple hoodie. And if I want to get inspired, I go to the internet and I search for a Nike hoodie. Already did that. And what you see over here, Nike sportswear, standard issues, men, fleece, pullover hoodie. So you can call this a hoodie hoodie. But if you take a look over here, you can get inspired. So if I would sell a hoodie from Nike, I would say this is a Nike hoodie, but then you see over here, there's so much in the title. Titles are important in the WordPress industry. So if I click over here, I see it's not just a Nike hoodie. It's a Nike sportswear club fleece hoodie. So it, it's not a bad idea to give some information over here about the product you're selling. If you're selling a PlayStation 5 controller, you can say controller, which it is. You can also say PlayStation 5 controller, which makes it so much more clear for the viewer. What kind of product we are talking about? So I will say a Nike hoodie. I could also say Nike fleece crew neck hoodie. And if I would search for that, you'll see something over here like that. Nike Sportswear Club fleece. We just saw this. Okay. So I will call this a Nike hoodie. Then over here we have a product description, but before I'm going to talk about it, I want to click on publish. And that means that we have published our first product on our website. So how will this look if I hold command or control on the PC and I click over here, I go to the website and here at the shop page, I see my product. It has no image, nothing else, no price, only the title. And I can click on read more. So this is what we have so far. And step by step, we're going to make this look so much better because if we see only this, nobody's going to buy this because 
<laughs> we saw, don't see any information. So I go to the back end and I'm going to talk about the product description. This is a long description that will be placed below all this information. So it will be placed over here and you can tell anything about this product. Later in the tutorial, we're going to use chat GPT to create some text, but right now I want to work with dummy text. So I go for the dummy text generator. Why this is copyright free text. So if I place this on my website, I do not get in trouble. But if I would just copy the Nike fleece crew neck, I would copy this text also, even though it's in Dutch, then I can have a problem with copyright. So to be safe, I prefer this text. And when I fill this in space, I can see how it will appear on my website when the website is filled with content. So it will look like this. The description, the long description will be placed here below. So you don't see it when you go to the page. You need to scroll down and then you see the long description. Keep that in mind. So this is actually to give more information about the product, maybe some instructions. And then over here, we want to have the good stuff that people see at once when they go to this page. In order to fill in the information over here, we need to scroll down all the way. We skip this for now. And then there's the product short description. So I can say something like when you wear this hoodie, your life will change. Make a lot of typos. Your friends will become friendlier and you will become super popular. Okay. Then I fix this using Grammarly. I have a tour about that. <laughs> if you want to watch that. I made so I make so much errors. So I uh, grammarly tutorial, and then maybe you should say thirty after that. Oh, is it so old already? Wow. Well, it's still relevant, and I use it every day, and I love it. Okay. So when I update it, the first time you'll see publish. After that, you'll see update, and I refresh the product page. You see it over here. So you can fill in the information like. It is uh, polyester. You can even use something like this. Buddha list. Soft, warm. Or even make a numbered list. You can have a quote. You can even expand it. And have more information. You can So you can make this different color. And when you would update it and refresh the page, the information will be shown over here. Well, there's so much more we can show over here, for instance, the price, because if I go to this area, this page, I can select the size, I can add it to my cart, I can make it a favorite. I do see the price, I see the discount. That's a lot of information I also want to show. Those images, I want to show those. And the great thing is that WooCommerce and the Bloxy theme are making a page or product page that looks like this one we just saw from Nike. So in order to fill in that information, we need to go back to the product data. And right now I want to start with a simple product, which means it only has one size, one color. There are no alternatives. There are no variations. So it can be a cap or sunglasses, anything that only has one option. Well, I want to sell a physical hoodie. If you want to sell something virtual only on the internet, you can select this. And if it's something only downloadable, you can select this one, then you can add the file that people can download after they buy it. Well, virtual is something like a digital service, like a Skype call or a Zoom call. Downloadable is like an ebook. We're going to talk about virtual products and downloadable products right now. I want to use a simple products and a few other variations, which we will cover are group products, affiliate products and variable products. But right now I select a simple product. The first thing in general, what we can do is give this a price and what I see it is in euros. Maybe you want to sell in a different currency. If you want that, then you need to go to WooCommerce settings. Then I scroll down and over here, the currency options, I want to change this to the United States dollar. The currency position left with a space. Well, I want to have left without a space. So there's no space between the, the price. So here's a space because it's a euro, but if it's a dollar, there's no space. So that's why I say 
left without space. A thousand separator in dollars is a comma and decimal separator, everything after the dollars is a dot. I want to have two decimals, the amount of cents. So I've saved the changes. And now if I go back to the website, to this product, I click on edit the product. I can scroll down, go to general. And then I say this one is 49.99. What we can do. Let's take a look, update. And right now we see this price over here. I can give this a discount or a sale price. So I can say normally it's 49.99. Right now it's 39.99. And then as long as I don't change this, this will always be $39.99. But maybe you're in a position that you want to give this a certain discount for a certain amount of time. In that case, you can scroll down and you can say the sale price of $39.99 is only available from today until the latest day of July. And now it still has the discount. But the 1st of August, it will disappear. Then the price of $49.99 will go back. So that's really nice. You can schedule this and give this a certain sale. What you also can do, you can say, okay, from the 10th on, there will be a discount. And uh, I have a tutorial about how to build an email list. If you build an email list, people that buy things on your website automatically will be added to the email list. You can send them all an email like, hey, from the 10th on, there will be a discount on all new hoodies or on certain products. You share the link of this product. And then from that day on, people can get discount. And we're gonna talk more about discount on how much discount in percentage or in dollars. But this is a great way to get people back to your website. And then if you would also say, if you buy for a minimum of $60, you get even free shipping. That means that when people buy these, this for $40, they still have to spend $20 extra in order to get free shipping. And when they do, you make more profit. Well, we're going to talk about it later. What you can do over here is give this product a sale price for a certain amount of time. Update, and then I scroll down and I go to the second tab, which is inventory. And we see the SKU and what is that does mean. Um, if I sell a product, I can give this a SKU number, but all products has, have a SKU number. But if I sell a Nike hoodie, for instance, this one, if I scroll down, this over here is the SKU number. That means if people want to buy this on a Nike store, but it's out of stock and people are smart, they can paste the SKU number. And then based on the SKU number, your product can be found over here. So when there's an existing product I'm selling, I always use the SKU number from that particular product so I can get more customers to my website when the official product on the official website is out of stock. And when you use a product that don't have, have a SKU number, you can always say, in my case, GCZ or Game Consoles underscore 0001, whatever you want. So if it's a, if it's a, an unknown product, use this one. If not, you can create your own one. I use this one for now. And what do we want to do with stock management? Well, I prefer to show people how much products there are in stock left. So right now, now we see nothing. But if I would say inventory, track it, and I have 20 in stock, it will look like this. So when there are only three in stock left, people know, hey, I need to buy it right now, otherwise it can be out of stock. So what else can we do with the inventory? Do we allow back orders? That means that when all those 20 hoodies are sold from my website and I send them to the clients, do I want it to say over here it's out of stock or do I want to let people still buy this and then I need to make sure I have it in stock as soon as possible so I can send it to the clients. But when I would say allow but notify the customer, can be back ordered, will be displayed over here that, that says, okay, it's out of stock, but it can still be can be back ordered. So the, I say they are still in stock, but even if you want to buy 30 right now, it's possible. So if I would say I want to buy 30, add to the cart, view the cart, I can still buy 30, but then I need to make sure 
that I will get those 10 extra because I only have 20 in stock and then I send it to the customer. So I prefer not to do this. You can also allow it back orders, but not even mention it. So I go to update to the product page and it will just say 20 in stock. It will not say out of stock, but it will say nothing when there's nothing in stock and then people can still buy it. But then I need to make sure that I have all those Nike hoodies in stock as soon as possible. Otherwise people need to wait for the product and that can harm the credibility of my website. So I prefer not to do that. What I prefer to do is do not allow back orders, but give me a message. WooCommerce should give me a message when there are only 10 in stock left. So I know, hey, I need to order this before it gets out of stock, depending on how much people buy this per day or per month or per week. So if two products per day would be bought of this product, I would like to have 100 in stock. So I can uh, do this for 50 days. And then when there are only 20 left in stock, then I need to get a message like, hey, in around 10 days, I will run out of stock. So I need to buy new ones. So when I say 20 over here, then WooCommerce sends me an email like, hey, there are only 20 left in stock. And then I know I need to repurchase those from Nike. What I also can do, I can leave this empty. And by default, the threshold is two. So if you leave this empty, I get an email when there are only two left in stock. If you want to change that number, then go to WooCommerce, Settings, Products, Inventory, and then I scroll down and the low stock threshold should be 20. Save the changes. Then I go back to Products over here. And now by default, if I fill in nothing, it will say 20. So Per product, I can change this, but by default, it will be 20. So for all the products in my website, when I have 20 left in stock, I will get a message for every single product that reaches a threshold of 20 pieces. What else? Sold individually. I can also say limit this purchase to one item per order. That can be handy when you're offering a Skype call for one hour. You don't want people to buy three hours for you because you only want to have a Skype call that's only a maximum of one hour. So if I turn it on, then it will not say add to the cart anymore or not at least uh, how much I want to add to the cart, but there's only an add to cart button. So I can only add one. So that's really nice for digital products. Why would you sell five eBooks? Of course they can do that, but um, I would turn it on one if you're selling a product like a Zoom session. So that was inventory. We're going to talk about it later about inventory. Let's go to shipping. I can give this product a weight weight. So right now, if I scroll down, I see description and reviews. If I give this a weight, for instance, uh, this is 0 0.6 kilograms and in centimeters, it's around 30 by 40 by two. Based on this information, I can calculate the shipping cost later in the tutorial. I will show how to do that. And if I would update it, there will be an extra tab refresh. Scroll down, there's description, additional information, and there I can see the weight and the dimensions. Maybe in your area where you're selling, it's not in kilograms and centimeters, but in different dimensions. Well, in that case, you can go to WooCommerce, settings, products, and then I scroll down and over here, I see the weight unit. I can change it to LBS and the dimensions to inches. And when I do that, I go to the products, to shipping, I can change the measures over here to something else. And if I make this empty again, update, that third tab is gone. What else can we do in the tab shipping? We can add shipping classes um, so we can assign specific products to specific classes and every class has their own price and their own limitations like where do we send to or where do we not send to through different countries or not we're going to talk about it later so let's talk about linked products we can do upsells those will be visible on the product page itself so here below you will see people are also interested in and then you can fill in those products over here but since we don't have other products yet we cannot do that yet there are also cross sells if people add this to the cart and they view the cart and here below, based on which products they buy, we can also 
do a cross sell by adding a product over here. And then when people add this to the cart, it will be displayed over here. We're going to talk about it later. I'll show you how that works because right now we don't have other products. So we're going to go to attributes. And that is interesting if you're making variable products right now, we are not. So we're going to talk about this later. Then we have advanced purchase notes. So when people buy this hoodie, I can give them a note. I can say, Hey, you just bought the Nike hoodie. I want to tell you that your life is about to change drastically, drastically in a good way. Then we have the menu order. That means if you say minus one, for instance, that this product will appear first on the catalog page. Well, we only have one product. So later I will display, show you how that works. Right now I keep it at zero and we can enable reviews. And that's what you see over here. Reviews, if I turn it off, people cannot leave a review. Well, I want that because then people can say how great it is and then I can get more sales. So I turn this on and now I can open this website in an incognito window. So I'm a visitor for the first time. I go over here, I bought it already and I can go to reviews. I can say, this is a five star. I can say, whoa, the description about becoming popular is really true. I thought it was a joke, but man, I have so many friends now and I get invited to weddings all around the world and people want to pay for all the tickets. Thanks game consoles where I bought my hoodie. It's from shorts, shorts from Hamelen at geocities.com.com. People can say their stuff. I can Shorts can submit this. Okay. It says your review is awaiting approval. And since I'm the administrator, I refresh the page. I see nothing yet. But if I go to the back end, I can go to products, reviews. And there I can approve this. And I get a message when there's a message like this. I can approve it and then I can reply. Awesome to hear that Shorts. I I'm about to get married at the Maldiva, Maldives, I don't know. I would love, I would love it if you could be there to celebrate. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Reply. And now if I go to the product, I see, oh, wow. I see five stars over here. Also over here, one customer review. And then here at reviews, I see a message from source and my response to that. So that's it about reviews. Let's go back to the settings, advanced reviews, get more options. I never use this and I suggest you also do not use it. And then it's time to go. To the right area over here. What we see over here right now, our product is published. It's visible on the internet. I can change that to pending review. What does it mean? It means that someone else can create products for you on your website and then it's pending review. That means that you need to review the product when you think everything thing is fine, then you can turn it to published. And the same thing is actually with draft it means it is in progress to be made the product, but it's not visible. So if I turn this to draft, I open the website in an incognito window. I don't see it. But when I turn it to, let's see, 
publish. Then it is visible. Visibility, is it uh, visible for everybody or password protected? Then you can give people a password and then they get access to that page. Or is it private? That means that only people that are logged in can see it. I prefer public. I can also say this will be available from next week. If I change that, I need to schedule it instead of publish it. So right now I can still see it because I'm logged in. But again, if people go to the website in an incognito window, they don't see it. So it can be nice if you want to buy or sell FIFA 24. It can be nice if you want to sell a product that's available from a certain date on. Then you can say, okay, from the 10th of July, then it will be visible in the store. You can even change the time. But again, I prefer to have it already be published. Okay, over here, something really interesting. We're going to talk about it later a bit more. But right now, where do I want to showcase this product? Right now, it is both in the shop. And with the shop, it's the, the catalog page, which is on the home page. It's visible over here and through search. So if I search for the hoodie, hoodie, it's over there. But if I say only in the shop and I update it and I refresh the page, then it's not visible in the search results. It will not be found. And you can do it the other way around. Say it's not in the shop only by search results or you can hide it. Why should you hide it? I'm going to talk about it later. You can also make this a featured product. And that means that in the sidebar of the, the, the website over here, for instance, you can only select or show featured images. So that can be a nice. And when you do that and you go to all the products, it has a beautiful star over here. You can click on it and then it will be turned off. It's not featured anymore. So let's go back over here. The product image, really important. If I click on set product image, I can upload files, select files from my computer. You can follow along in the images I use in the tutorial. So you can go to WooCommerce and over here, I have a few images of the hoodie, front, side, back. I can hold shift, arrow down, arrow down and open them. Of course, I can select one and that will be visible over here. So do I want to choose this one or the one in front? I choose one in front. What I always like to do, copy the title. Create spaces, paste it in the alt text and in the description. And now it will look so much better. Bam. So I go to the product page and now it's visible over here. When I hover over it, it looks like this. We can adjust all this information later. Right now I'm happy with it. If I scroll down, I can also add products to the gallery. So I have two other images. This one, I hold command or control on the PC and this one. And I add it to the gallery and now it will look like this. So if I scroll down, I can select other images again, zoom in, navigate. So uh, the Bloxy theme is doing an amazing job with this. And what I don't like now is that we have the homepage and then we have uncategorized and then we have the Nike hoodie. Well, we need categories for that. So I scroll down and over here we see product categories and by default, everything is uncategorized. If I go to the Nike website, what I see over here are actually categories, new and featured. So we have the featured star. We can turn things to featured. We have men, women, kids, accessories, and sale. Okay. When I go to men, that's a category. Then I also have subcategories, all shoes, and then lifestyle shoes, Jordan shoes, Air Max. So we have a category, a subcategory and sub subcategories. And if I click over here, I only see Dunk and Blazer shoes over here. Categories are a great way to bring structure into your website. So we need to have categories. So the first thing I can do over here, category category is men. Well, let's see, how do we say that? Men with an E. 
men and then the other one women so women automatically it will be selected so right now this is also in the category women maybe it's only for when men then i can turn this off and turn this off update refresh the page so i see home men my hoodie when i click on men i see all the products that contain the category men right now it's only one but this will bring structure into your website look at this if, as i said uh, i go to men if i click on men i see all the products with the category men this is all for men if i go for men shoes i don't see clothing i only see shoes because it's a subcategory for men called shoes also over here i see all the categories so if i go for soccer i see all the products with the category or the subcategory soccer so you don't see tennis shoes over here so over here i have men and women and then below that i want to have a subcategory called hoodies and i want to link it to the category men and that's how we create a subcategory so the, the parent category is men look at this this is structure i love structure especially when you're selling hundreds of clothes or products on your website you better have some structure so in this case if i would apply this to the nike website it would be men and then hoodies and then i could have lifestyle hoodies basketball hoodies i don't know if they exist so i could even create a subcategory so lifestyle could be a child of hoodies now if i save this uh this falls on the category men hoodies and lifestyle so if i update it and i take a look at the product page i see home men hoodies lifestyle so if i have a lot of products with a lot of different categories and i want to find any product about men i click over here if i want to find hoodies for men i click over here if i only want to find lifestyle hoodies i click over here and in that way it will be easier for the customers to search for the products they are searching for on my website so that's what i love about the categories and it's really important to to use that with every product you create then we have product tags it's almost the same with less structure but when you click on a tag you see all the products that have the same tag so if i have the tag black because it's a black hoodie i can have a comma and a space i can say hoodie i can say cotton if I click on add, they will be added over here. And then I can update the product page. And then you see them over here, the tags. And again, when people click here, they see all the products with the tag black. Well, this is the first product, so you only see one product. But that's also a way to create structure and order in your WooCommerce website. I scroll down. And as you see, we've covered all the things we can do for the simple product. So again, I go to the homepage. Yeah, I see this. This is something we're going to change later. I click on the product on the image. This is how it looks. This is also something we can adjust, but we see the title, a review with stars, the price. And if I want to, I can have a discount. Where did that go? Well, it's not active yet. So let's make it active. Refresh. There you go. The short description, how many there are in stock. We can add them to the cart, the SKU number, the categories, the tags. Here we see the image. We can hover over it and zoom in. It's a sale. We can navigate through all the images. We can also do that over here. And as I said before, we can configure this page to make it look as we want it to look. The long description and the reviews. So that is our first product. And here at the homepage, of course, we see this one product. So let's go for the next product. I hope you're excited about what you've learned already. I am uh, for you. <laughs> I think this is amazing and I'm happy that I'm able to teach it to you. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take it to the next level. We created a simple product. Now we're going to create a variable product. That means that there's one product with multiple variations. For instance, a t-shirt that is black or blue or orange, but maybe orange and then Excel or blue or S. So that's what I'm uh, talking about when I talk about variations. I'll show you right now how to create a variable product and also how to 
make it visible that people can click on the color and then they see immediately what kind of product they're able to buy. Yes, I'm excited. I hope you're too. Let's create it right now. So again, we go to new product and this time we're going to go for a variable product. Since we talked about a lot of things already, I will mainly talk about the new features within a variable product. So I will create a title t-shirt. I'll go to the dummy text generator, get some text for the description. This is the, the long description, the short description. I will leave it empty. So really quick, set the product image. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can follow or download, uh, upload those four images of a t-shirt. I will go for the white one. And for the gallery, I go for the other three. And for the categories, I can create a new one called T-shirts uh, with the parent man. So it's for T-shirts for the man. Product tags, white, comma, black, comma, cotton, and T-shirt. I add them. So now we can focus on this area. So if we go to product data, we need to go for a variable product. And there we see an extra tab attributes. I go to the attributes and let me show you two ways on how we can do things. First one is this one on the product page. We go to attributes and I can create a new attribute and I can call this size or color or version. Well, in this case, I want to go for the size and now I can enter multiple sizes. For instance, small, then I need to use shift backslash. That's a, a pipe, I think. And I can say medium. Then I can say large and then I can say extra large. Okay. I want both of these options checked and I save the attributes. Okay. So now people can choose four sizes, but I want to make it even more complicated even though I will explain to you how everything works. I want to add a new attribute. This time it's color, color. And I want to have two colors. The first one is white and the second one is black. I save the attributes. Okay. So what I want to do, I have four sizes and I have two colors and I want to make a, a variation of all those possibilities. So really simple, two times four, there are eight variations. So if I save the attributes, I go to variations, then I can click on generate variations and that will be based on the attributes we have. So two times four it will be a total of eight variations. Eight variations do not have prizes. So the first thing I want to do, I want to add a main price. The great thing is for every variation, we can have a different price, but I want to start adding a price that's the same for everyone and that's 29.99 i add the price and if i would expand all these different options the price everywhere will be 99.99 a few more things i want to do the default form values so let me publish this take a look at the product look at this i can choose an option small and the color black. But by default, if I refresh the page, nothing is selected. Well, I want something to be selected at once when people enter this page. Otherwise they need to do something extra. So in order to do that, I can do that over here at the variations, the default of form values. By default, I want to select a large white t-shirt. So I save the changes. I refresh the page and by default, it will be large and white. So let's go back because I want to add a few other settings over here or uh, and some information. And I can also add uh, information to all those products at the same time using a bulk action. I want to go for the stock because right now if I select something, medium, black, add it to the cart, there is no stock. So I can add, I can even add a thousand. Update the cart. 
it's a nice amount of money, but I don't have a thousand in stock. So I need to manage the stock. So I go to the bulk actions and I say toggle manual manage stock. Okay, so now we've managed stock. So right now, if I would go back to the product, it'll say it's out of stock because now we need to fill in how much stock we have. Well, I would start with 20 products per size and color. So 20 small whites, small blacks, medium whites, etc. So I go for bulk actions and then I say stock. Now I can fill this in and I can say 20. Question is, is it smart? You can see in the statistics which products will be bought most. And based on that, you can have a higher or a lower stock. But right now, everything has a stock of 20. So I refresh this medium black 20 stock. If I go to variations and small white, I can say I only have 10 in stock. Update. So I was talking about small white. Now, if I refresh the page, and the stock is 20. If I go for a white small, there's only 10 in stock. So that's because over here I said there are different stock quantities. I can do the same with the price. I can scroll down all the way, go to extra large and say for extra large, it is $34.99. Also for the black one, $34.99. So by default, people select the L, which is $29.99. But if I go for a large one or extra large, it's $34.99. So per variation, you can adjust things, but we can take it even a step further, which is really nice. Right now we have the color white. If I want to select a black t-shirt, I can select black, but then I still see the white t-shirt. If you want to change that, if you want to represent in the image over here, what you're selecting over here, then we can expand them all at variations. Expand. I'm getting a little bit excited. So maybe, or you should, you should, should slow down the tutorial or rewind a few times, or I should maybe talk a little bit more slow. So let me do that. I go for the small white. And if it says white over here, I click here. I go for the white t-shirt. I scroll down. Black. I select the black front. White. So white, black, white, black. And I only have to do this once. It takes some time. But then it is all automatically been displayed and processed in our website, which is amazing. I love to automate things. Actually, showing this tutorial is automatic. That's also what I like. Maybe right now I'm asleep. <laughs> You're watching this tutorial. How great is that? Check this out. Black, white, large, black. If I go for extra large, black, you see black. If I go for white, the price is different. If I go for small and white, the stock is different. So that's what you can do over here with a variable product. Each variation can have their own settings. So I can have their own and they can have their own SKU numbers. They can, one can be on sale. We can allow back orders. So that's the great thing about a variable product. But let me show you something that's even a bit more next level. If I go to the homepage, I can see t-shirt and the price range. Most of them are $29.99 and the XLs are $34.99. I can select options instead of add to cart. If I add this to the cart, immediately it will be added to the cart. There you go. But if I have a variation, I can select the options and then I go to the page and then I can change things over here. But how would it be if we could display this with images and with colors and labels instead of these options? That would make it easier for the visitor. And that's what we want. We want to make sales. I assume when you create a web shop, you want to make sales. So let me show you a better way on how to display this. And in order to do that, I go to the back end, to plugins, add new, and then I search for variation swatches. And I need to go for the one from card flows. I see it over here. And if you can't find it, just hit card flows on your keyboard, type it in. 
And there it is. More than 100,000 installations installed now. And I activate it. So what I want to do now, I want to go to my product t-shirt. And actually I want to remove all the attributes. Remove and remove. Save the attributes. I go to variations. And now they are gone, which is totally what I want. So now I go to products, attributes. I want to create attributes over here. Why? If I use a color blue in my website for multiple products, I don't have to create them one by one every time. Because if I create another t-shirt with variations, I need to do everything again. So I need to go to attributes, create size, create color, uh, choose the colors or fill them in over here. What I want, I want to have those colors already visible somewhere in my website and then I can just choose them over here. Let me show it to you. I go to the product attributes and first I go for the size again. So now I can have so many sizes and the variation swatch type, I want it to be a label. The shape, I want it to be a circle and the size, I want it to be 36. Add the attribute. So we have added an attribute that we can choose for every product we create, every variable product, we can choose this attribute. So the size, in order to configure that, I need to go to product attributes and then over here, configure terms. So now I can create a size. The first one is excess, extra small. I don't need a description. Then I need an S, middle or medium, large, XL, two XL, three XL. So those are the sizes I have on my website. Maybe not for the t-shirt, but maybe for other products I will sell. I can always add some later. So I go to products, attributes, and then size, configure them. And I can add new ones. I can also remove ones. So um, now I go for the second attribute, which is color. But this time I don't want to use a label. No, no, no. I want to use a color. And the shape is a circle. And again, it is 36. I add the attribute and this time it's not a, a, a label, but a color. So if I click on configure terms, I can choose the color black, which is actually not a color. And then I can choose the color also over here. I add new color and now it's displayed like this. I can do the same for white. Again, it takes some time to configure this, but in the long run, it will save you so much time and it will make it so much easier for you. So which colors are you going to use in your website or uh, which product colors for products are you going to use? So I will have red colors, red products in my website. So I will have the color red and I'll select red. I will have green colors, green products in my website. So I select green. I will have blue colors in my website. And as I said, you can always expand this later. So let's keep it with this. Everything is saved already. So now I go to all products to the t-shirt again. This time I go to variations or attributes. But this time I'm not going to create a new one like this size. No, I'm going to add an existing one. And the first one is size. And then I can select all the sizes I want to select, but I don't need two XL or three XL. I only want to use XS, medium, small, and large. No, no XS and XL, those four. Don't uh, mind the order, I just save it. Then I click here again, I want to go for the color and there are only two colors I want to select, black and white. And if I create a new product with variations, then I can select other colors. If I sell a uh, variable product with the color green and red, then I can choose those. But right now I only want to use those four sizes and those two colors. I save the attributes. I do exactly the same thing. I go to variations. And they're already over here. Okay, let me remove those. 
I can do two things. I can link them now, like make them small, black, small, white, etc. But I want to show you how I would do it from scratch. So I go to variations, generate variations. And there you go. And now, right now, they already have everything linked. I do the same thing. So let me go through it a little bit faster. 29.99. I go to bulk actions. Toggle manage stock. Then I go, go for a stock of 20. I expand them all. And for black, I add this one. So let me fast forward. Okay, and for Excel, I want to make it 39.99. Also, this one is an Excel black 39.99. And then at the small area, for instance, um, white and small, let me collapse everything. S white, I can change the stock to 10. Let me update it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, right now, when I go to the website, now we see something else. Look at that. Now we can change the size and the color. And we see it already in the catalog page. So already over here, we can make a selection M and black and add it to the cart. And before we saw choose options, something like that. So I prefer also that, that everywhere we see the same thing. We saw a select option. So what I need to do, I need to go to the product and I need to create, um, this one over here, L white safe. So we see add to cart instead of uh, choose options or select options. So by default, L, Y is selected. If I go to the product page, look at this, L, M, S. And if I change the color, this happens. I love this. What I don't like is the order over here. If you want to change that, you need to buy a plugin from myself. I created it. It's $50 per day, but it really will help you to change the order. No, of course not. You can change this by going to the back end to products, attributes. Then we go to the size. And here I can change the order. So I start with the smallest. And S. M. L. XL. 2XL, 3XL. Now, if I go to the website. SML XL. If I take a look at the product, SML XL. So I can have multiple colors over here. And the great thing, as I said before, now if I'm going to create a new variation, I can choose sizes and colors from the attributes I have already created over here. And in the long run, this will save me a lot of time. You can add a third one, which is an image. So what I could do, t shirt. Image, default shape, uh, circle, and then I could say, um, make it um, 50, add the attribute, okay, configure, then I could have two black t-shirt, upload an image, which is this one, and add a new t-shirt, and a white t-shirt, upload an image of the white one, okay. Now let me create a new product really quick. Product t-shirt two. And now I can go to attributes and I can choose t-shirts. I can select which one I want to have black and white, save the attributes. Then I go for size. I go for S and M, only those two. Okay, then I change this to a variable product. Go to variations, generate variations. So only two options. I expand them. The black one is, of course, this one and the white one. Okay, I want to set a price $29. Point nine nine. Okay. Okay. Publish. 
Let's take a look at the product now based on the image. I can choose it. So there are three swatches, images. So that's what you can use. Or text, labels, or colors. And you can also combine them all three. And, and also on the catalog page, it will look so great as you see. And then if you don't want that, click over here, edit product, and make sure that at variations by default, one of the t-shirts or one of the products is selected. So now I see add to cart, add to cart, and add to cart. Unless I change it and then it will look like that. So again, labels, colors, and images. How great is that? I think that's pretty great. We're still working with free tools. And I have to say, I'm impressed what is free within WordPress. I love WordPress. And it's a great moment to ask you, please like this video if this video is, if this video is helpful. And subscribe for more upcoming tutorials like these. I, I like to make high quality, in-depth tutorials so you can learn how to make a website. So it's time to create a third product. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to create a digital product. Let's create a virtual product. It can be a coaching call. It can be a ticket for an event. I go to new, I go to product. I call this one coaching call. 16 minute coaching call. We know uh, by now how to deal with all this stuff. I'm going to add a, an image, upload files, and I go for the photo of 30 from almost 10 years ago. It was 2014. So the regular price is, let's say, 299. This time for 199. It's uh, for 60 minutes. It's a simple product and it's a virtual product, but you cannot download this Skype call. It's a virtual product, but People cannot download anything. So I go to inventory and I want to limit the purchase time to one per order. So people cannot schedule me for three hours, <laughs> only one hour, 60 minutes. And then at advanced, at the purchase notes, I can say, go to HPS 30 corpcom forward slash Calendly call or coaching call to book an appointment with me and then I can uh, link them to Calendly where they can see my calendar and they can book a time slot and then they already paid over here and then we can have the coaching call and if I'm in a really good mood I can send them the download link afterwards when I recorded the session. Okay, so that's it. Of course, we know the categories so I can say um, coaching and also here I can do that coaching. So I publish it. I view the product. That's it. A 60 minute coaching call from one uh, from 299 for 199. I can add it to the cart, view the cart. And when I would purchase it, I get a message like, Hey, go to this link and book a uh, appointment with me. So that is it when it comes to a virtual product. We have created three of the six products already. Now it's time to create the fourth product, a digital downloadable product. It can be an ebook. It can be a stock photo that you've created and it's really beautiful and that people want to buy to use on their website or on their wall. And it is amazing if you can sell tools, for instance, a WordPress plugin or a WordPress theme or software, you can sell it on your website using a digital downloadable product. Let me show you how to create it. Next product, a downloadable product, which of course is a virtual product. So I go to new product and in my case, I want to sell an ebook. So you can sell an ebook or an image or anything digital. So if you would go to 30corp.com forward slash and fold, you go to this theme, which is $59 and it's already sold for 250,000 times. So let's do some calculations. 250,000 times 59 is a really nice amount of around almost $15 million. 
You know how big this theme is when it comes to size? Below one megabyte. So the, the whole market for digital products, it's, it's crazy. So if you can create a product like this, this is an, uh, a WordPress theme with a lot of beautiful options or an ebook that will help people to make money or to become more self-confident or whatever. If you can create something digital that will help people, that makes people want to invest in that $59 or $20, and a lot of people do that, then you can become really rich and start to do good things with the money. So I want to sell an ebook and it's called how to become an online entrepreneur. Again, you know by now what you can fill in over here. It's a category, digital, e or e-books. The price is 90.99. It's a virtual product and it's downloadable. So I can add the download, downloadable file over here. And that means that when people buy this, after they bought it, they pay money, it goes to my account, then they can download this. So this is the file they will be downloading. It's around 250 kilobytes. And if I would sell this a thousand times, then I made $20,000 with a product that can be created in a relative short amount of time. So it's crazy. It's a crazy world we live in. Over here, I give this file a name, how to become an online entrepreneur ebook also here in the title ebook how to become an online entrepreneur then i can have a product image upload files miscellaneous mm, no woocommerce let's see how to become an online entrepreneur ebook by the way uh, i bought something for around $40 to make this. So also here, if you would go to graphics and you search for ebook mockup, mockup, something like this, $5, a thousand sales. So this product, uh, maybe he made it in a day, made him $5,000. So, uh, to show you some information about what is possible with these digital products. So um, how many times can people download it? Unlimited times. How long can they download it? If you leave it empty, it will be available forever. Or you can say for a certain amount of time. But um, for me, it's fine. View the product. And also here, edit the product. Go to inventory. There's no inventory because it's a digital product, but limit the bought the buying process to one product. So I go to the website, I see those products, add to the cart, view the cart, but I cannot add more. I only can have one. I go to the checkout. Look how beautiful this looks. This is made with WooCommerce installed by the Bloxy theme. If you scroll down, it, it looks so elegant in my opinion it looks so beautiful of course we can get rid of the, the fields we don't use but uh that's something for later in the tutorial when people buy it and they pay they get the download link and then they can read the book or get the theme or whatever you've created digitally so um we have four different kind of products already let's go for the fifth one what up people are you still having fun i hope so this makes me so excited what I'm about to tell you. We're going to create an external product better known as an affiliate product. Affiliate marketing is something else. It is amazing. I'm teaching you how to sell products on your website, physical, digital, grouped products, variable products, but they're also external products. What does it mean that you don't sell your own products, but you sell other people's products? And that's called affiliate marketing and when you sell other people's products and people buy that through your unique affiliate link you get a commission and that's really interesting because you're not a help desk when you get your sale your commission your work is done and you can put things on autopilot by creating a web shop and this is also what i'm doing um, with a lot of websites and with my youtube channel 
placing affiliate marketing of affiliate products in my tutorials and in my on my websites that I create. And when people buy those, I get a commission. And when you help people to, to make the right choice to buy certain products, a lot of people buy it, then it can become really interesting. So let me show you how to create an external affiliate product in WooCommerce. To give you an example, if you would go to ferdicorp.com forward slash Elementor, hit enter, you will be redirected to this page through my affiliate link, what you see over here, affiliate ID, affiliate. So this is my unique link. I get it when I sign up to become an affiliate. And now when people buy this, I get a commission. And in some cases it can be up to 50%. So in that case, I would get $30 when people buy this. So if five people per day would buy this through my affiliate link, that's $150 per day times 30 is around $4,500 per month. Is it possible? It is. So how can you create an affiliate product? Hover over new product. And I will sell Elementor Pro. I get an, a product image, upload files. I go for Elementor. There you go. Copy, paste, paste. Okay, I select an external affiliate product. The product URL is https ferdicorp.com forward slash Elementor. That's my affiliate link. I can say buy or get Elementor Pro. The regular price is $59 per year. Over here I can say theme builders. Publish in the short description, I can say build professional websites with ease. Update, view the product, Elementor Pro, build professional websites with ease. Now when people buy a click over here, they go to the affiliate link. Now when people buy this and if they will buy this plan, I get $199.50. Isn't that Amazing. How can you know? Um, if I go to affiliate program, look up to 50%. Wow. So, so when people buy this, look at this. 399. I get around $200 as a finder fee, as a promoter fee. So that's the awesome world of affiliate marketing. And I see it over here, Elementor Pro. So five different kind of products. There's one more. Let's go for it. So the latest product, a grouped product, can be really handy when you want to sell multiple products on one product page. Why? Because it's all about the client that is visiting your uh, uh, website. The whole idea is to make the whole selling process as smooth as possible for the visitor and a grouped product can help you with that and i'll show you right now how you can apply this and how to make a grouped product so we have five products already let's create the sixth one i hover over new and i go to product and this product will contain multiple products so what i want to sell i want to sell a play station five but not only that, I want to include controllers, a charging dock station for the controllers to be charged and a headphone. So I scroll down, I go from a simple product to a grouped product and let's create a new category, electronics. Electronics, yes, we'll get there. And a subcategory game consoles with the parent electronics. Okay. I grab a product image, but I don't have one because I cannot place those in my folder for you because uh, I don't own the rights. So what you can do if you want to follow along, go to Amazon, search for PlayStation 5. And I search for the digital edition 
this one for instance let's see if there's a better looking image this one cool i save it and i rename this playstation 5 digital edition i always rename my images for the search results then i go for a playstation 5 controller white just the the, the regular one Amazon's choice. I call it the image. PlayStation 5 controller. What else? I want to have a docking station. This one, the best seller. Save the image. PlayStation 5 docking station. And a headphone. PlayStation 5 headphone. Maybe, maybe, maybe this one. So we can talk to each other while being online. PlayStation 5 headphone. So what I want to do, I want to create a few products. This one is the one I will publish. PlayStation 5 product image. Let me upload them all. Only shift open. Okay, I grab this one. Update. And now I go to new product. And this is the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition console. Or whatever you want to call this. Product image, the same one, but what I want to do, I want to go to the catalog visibility here at publish and I want to hide it from the entire shop. Why? I do not want to show this as a single product on my website. I only want to show this in the grouped product. So I say hidden. Okay. Publish. And I need to have a price. So 399.99. There's no sale update. Now I want to copy it to a new draft. And this time I go for a PlayStation 5 controller. Copy the title, edit the permalink, paste the permalink, click on OK. It's still hidden. That's what I like. I change the image, of course, to the controller. And the controller is sold for $6 or $59.99. publish then i copy it as a new draft and i say playstation 5 headphone copy it paste it okay click on the image go for the headphone and the headphone is 129.99 publish and then the latest one they're all hidden so let me show you in a minute PlayStation 5 docking station. Copy the title, paste it, change the image, and uncheck the uncategorized. And this is only $90.99. Publish. Okay, now if I go to the store, let me update this really quick. I go to the store. Where is it? Nowhere. Only this one. So I click over here again. I edit the product. And now look at this. I scroll down since it is a group product. I can go to linked products, group products, and I select or I choose PlayStation. Then I go for the digital edition, PlayStation controller. After that, the PlayStation docking station, and then the latest one. PlayStation headphone. Okay, look at this. I go to the website, I go to this product, and now people can buy multiple things. So most of the time they want to buy one PlayStation, but maybe they want to have three extra controllers and two docking stations and a headphone and maybe you want to add some games over here that's how you can create a group product and in cases like this it's handy i 
never use it for my own websites and I also never use it for websites of clients. But hey, I just want to show you what is possible. So right now they're all added to the cart. And that's what I really like. So what we have, we have a simple product, one option. We have a variable product with multiple options. Then we have a digital product. We have a digital downloadable product. We have an external affiliate product and we have a grouped product. So far, so good. Since we have six different kinds of products on our website, it's time to talk about upsells and cross-sells. Two more things I want to mention before we're going to take a look at the layout of the shop page. I want to talk about upsells and cross-sells. So let's go to this product, for instance. Right now, if I scroll down, I don't see any upsells. If I add this to the cart, I view the cart, I see nothing over here. So let's get rid of this and this, this one and this one, only the PlayStation 5. I go to the website, to this product, and I click on edit product. I scroll down, I go to product data and then to linked products. And here I see an upsell. So an upsell is on the product page itself. So I want to do an Elementor Pro upsell. So if I would view the product, I hold command or control on the PC. If I scroll down, I have an upsell over here. I can have multiple. So I can, can go to linked products and a hoodie and a PlayStation update. So now below this page, if I refresh the page, there are three products. Why? Because I said over here that I want that. Well, then there's something else. If I go to link products, then there's also cross sales. Cross sales are visible on the cart page. So again, I want to promote Elementor Pro. Update. If I go to the cart page, the cart. I see no upsell. Why? Because I said it should be linked to the ebook, how to become an online entrepreneur. So when that product is bought and placed in the cart, then an upsell or a cross sell will appear over here. So I go to my products and I say, you know what? I want to add this to the cart, view the cart. And now it appears over here. So that's what you can do with cross sells and upsells. Upsells are on the page itself over here and cross sells are on the cart page based on the products there are in your cart. So if I close this, it is also gone. And what else do I want to show you? Right now there's an order by default ordering. I can also sort by popularity or by price. But when there's default sorting, I can give this a custom order. How? Actually quite simple. I go to one of the products if I want. Um, okay, let's do the order of the six products we created. So first I create the hoodie, so I can edit the product and I can say advanced I can say one, but I can also say minus three as long as there's an order. So I say minus three and that will bring my product to number one. So let's go to all the products. Then I go to the t-shirt again, advanced. I can say minus two and it will appear over here, three, four, five, six. This, this is the right order. So in that way I can give everything a custom order. So if I take a look at one of the products, I think it's really, really big image. I don't like it. I want to change the look and feel and I also want to change the look and feel of the shop. How can we do that? Let me show you. I think our website looks great already. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You may all be seated. Of course, it's also because of WordPress, because of Hostinger, because of WooCommerce, and because of the Bloxy theme. It's not only my work, especially of all those other people. I'm just teaching you how it works, but I'm flattered. Thank you. So we're going to make it look better using the Bloxy theme. It already looks great, but we're going to make it look even better. Why not? That's a great question. Why not? I have no idea. So let's do it. 
in order to change the look and feel of our web shop, we need to go to the customizer. I want to start with the fonts over here or actually on the whole website. And if you want to find fonts, you can go to fonts.google.com. I prefer not to use serif. If I would choose serif, what you see, it has those nice fonts. I prefer sans serif, which means it has no serif. So it's a little bit more clean in my opinion. So I use a sans serif and then I can search over here. I can also type a text. Game consoles. I like this font. <laughs> which one is this? Open sans, beautiful. Roboto. Maybe even better. So if you see something you like, you want to use you can do that. I like Nunito Sans. So what I can do, I can click over here. Then I go to the fonts of the menu and then it says default family. So what we also can do, we can go to the typography and then the base font. So the font that will be used in the whole website, unless we have some other settings over here. We could say Nunito Sans. And then you see it will change on the whole website. So if I go to t-shirt product, if I change it over here, you see all those spots are affected. So you can take a look over here. What kind of fonts, uh, fonts you want to have? Uh, I like when I saw over here, Roboto, for instance, Roboto. Okay. I also like open sans. Let's see what it, that is doing. That's better. But for the heading, I want something else for this area, for instance. So if I would go to heading one and I say, Times New Roman, you see only this area that changes because this is a heading one. So for all the headers, I want to have Nunito Sans. I copy this, select it, and then the second one, paste, select, paste, select. You only have to do this once until you decide to change things. So I did it. That's it. Publish. Now I can go to those three dots of the menu. Then I go to design and it says we choose the default family, but I can also choose something else over here. I will choose Nunito Sans and there you go. Then I go to the three dots. I like the font size, a bit bigger, 13 line, it doesn't matter. But the letter spacing, I think it's really close to each other. It can also be because I have no regular font. Okay, this is really small. What I like to do, I like to take a look at examples of other websites or web shops. So if I go to amazon.com, there's a bold text over here, but in the heading, it looks like this. So this is all in capitals. Game consoles is without capitals. So I can also say, click over here, no capitals. Maybe no capitals at all. But now only the first letter is a capital. That's okay with me. Nunito Sans, maybe a bit bolder. And then we can make it bigger. And in that way you can fine tune the fonts on your website. I think I will go like this because Amazon also has no capitals and this has a capital first letter so I will leave it like this but maybe a bit a little bit bolder and then a little bit more space over here leather spacing perfect no I don't feel it
zero five, or I can do it with pixels. That's what I prefer in this case. Publish. And now I'm happy with this area. Great. So that's it about uh, fonts. This is how it looks right now. I like it. Let's take a look at the, the catalog page. Then we're going to take a look at the product page. And what I prefer to do is take a look at really known, well-known websites, web shops in this case, and how they present the information. So they use the dark color, almost black, then dark blue, greenish, turquoise, turquoise, but really dark. They have orange. They also have orange here. There's a website in the Netherlands called Cool, cool Blue. And as you see, I use the same colors. And if I go to a product, they use blue and orange and green. So what I prefer to do, copy this green color, or I just use a certain green color. So I go to the customizer, scroll down, I want to make this green. Let me show you how easy it is. I can hover over here, click on edit, or I go to the WooCommerce product archive page. An archive page for a product is a page with all the products. Then there's a single product if I would go to the t-shirt page. So over here I can adjust a lot of things. So I can get rid of the, this area. So I can uh, talk about it later. Right now I want to go over here. So I scroll down. Then I go for the card options. Then there is the add to card button. And then here at design, the add to cart button background color. I want to change it to green or to this color, the hashtag before. When people hover over it, it becomes orange. So I can copy this, paste it over here and make it a bit darker. Awesome. So that looks a little bit more like that. And those people that they spent maybe millions in optimizing their website, see what works best, what is making the most sales. Uh, I would not copy everything. I have to say in this tutorial, I'm copying quite a few things, the colors here, the, the colors actually, but um, you can get inspired. So I could also decide to go with a different greenish color. But let's go back to the, to the beginning of the shop. Um, if I close this, do I want this area to be here? Well, maybe you want. And for everything you see, there are different options. So I can click on edit and I can go back and I can get rid of it. I can put it back. I can also click on the arrow to the right and change the style to something like this. Or I can go to design have an image overlay color. That means that you can also have an image over here, over here, custom image. I can select an image. <laughs> Something like this, but I prefer to have nothing and also no title like this. So I can go back and I can turn it off. What else can we do? Well, there are two different settings. Type one, as you see, it looks like this. And type two, I prefer that one because here is the same background as the, the current background. And when it's over here, everything is with a white background. I, I prefer that because I really like the, the slightly darker background. So I choose this one and then I can configure it. How many columns do I want to have next to each other? I like three. Also because I want to go for a sidebar, how many rows? I can say five. So I have 15 products that I can show over here. Then there are the card options. The image right now, you see the quality is really low. So I can bring this up to 600 and then it will look better, it's sharper. Then the image ratio, I can go for one by one, 16 by nine, two by one, I can reverse it. 
I prefer the one I saw, three by four. So I'll keep that one. And then for one product, it looks a little bit weird. So I will talk in a minute on how you can fix that. There's a hover effect. Well, right now there isn't, only on the text. So if I want to change that, I can swap the images. Really nice option like that. But not everything, every image, every product has multiple images. I like to zoom in. Really nice. Do we want to have the seal batch if there's a seal? If not, turn it off. Do we want to show the product categories? Yes, I definitely want to do that. Do we want to show a short description? No, because then it will look like this. I don't like that. Add to cart button? No. Or yes. What shall we do? Let's keep it in. The gaps, the gap between these areas. I can say 50 or I can say 20. I prefer 20. And then I can go to the design. The price color, for instance, I can change that. Make it blue, the color of our website, the title color. I like it to be dark when I hover over it. It can become orange if you want that or make it lighter. The price color, as I said, as we spoke about the category colors. Dark. The button text color, I can make it white. And then the background color. Green. Dark. And if I don't like it, I can bring it back by clicking here. And we can have a shadow over here for the card. Well, I prefer not to add things to the card. So I turn it off and then automatically this goes to the center. Great. This is something we can change in the, in the plugin and we'll talk about it in a minute, how we can bring this to the center. So uh, that's how you can change things. Um, we're not there yet. These are we're only the card options. Do I want to show that we can sort things over here? I can turn it off and it's gone. Before I had to use CSS and stuff and hide things. Now I can just show everything. I prefer to put everything in, especially knowing, let me see. There it is, especially knowing that uh, we're going to add a lot of products, so we'll have a big shop and then people say, hey, there are 300 products. I prefer to do that. If you sell, don't sell a lot of products, then I will maybe turn it off. I want to have a sidebar. At the right, I can click over here. Also place at the left, but I prefer the right because that's what a lot of people have. I want to make it intuitive. Do I want to have pagination? Yes, they can go to the second and third page. Just like here, I think. When I go for electronics, cell phones, I scroll down. I can go to the second page. And the product catalog, how do we want to display things? You can display categories. I never use that for any of my clients. I want to show the products and I can change the default product sorting. So I can also say always change it uh, based on the rate. So if I would say rate and this will be the first one because that's the only one with a rate or rating. I prefer default sorting. Okay. So far, so good. Publish. Then I want to go to the single product by clicking here. And man, I really don't like it, especially when you close it. Look, look how wide it is. So much space. So I prefer to adjust it, make it smaller. How can we do that? Well, let's go to the WooCommerce single product page. And now I can change the structure so I can make it smaller. I can place a sidebar at the left or at the right. I prefer to have a narrow width. Like that. And then boxed, definitely boxed because right now 
you see the background over here. I prefer to have it boxed. Beautiful. Do I want the space over here? If not, disable, disable that, but I prefer to have that on top and at the bottom. The gallery options. So over here, I have four images. I can narrow this down, make it smaller, make it 50. The thumbnail spacing, you can just slide and see what's happening and I can bring it back. You can also make it vertical. That's what I see with, not with cool blue, but was that the case with Amazon? Yes. So, hey, we can also do that. And all with a free theme, I, th I still think that's amazing. But if I take a look at the width of this area, then below is better. How do you want to display the image? Again, uh, I like it to be the same. I can use a light box. That means if I click on it, I can navigate. Um, I don't need that. Uh, do I want to have the zoom effect? If I turn it off, it stays like that. I think actually that's better. What do they do over here? They have it. They don't have it over here. So that's how you can figure out for yourself what you want. But the great thing is that all those options are available. If I want to go to the next one, how should it be displayed? Also make this orange. And that's, that's what I love. All those options. Go back. So the product title, how do I want to display all this? I like it to be blue. Because that's the main color of my website. But then I think, okay, F on you. If I want it to be blue, you can do that, but I prefer the darker color. The price, I can change the color. I can change the font. New Nito Sans. I can make it bolder. I can make it italic. Make it bigger. Then the add to cart, really important for me. The background, I want to be green, not too green. Copy for the hover, paste it. Okay. Quantity, color is okay. The arrows. Let's see if we can also make this green. Mm, definitely not. But that's how you can play around with things. Also here, maybe better to make it green. Or blue. Okay. The sales badge. If there's a sale, do I want to show that? Yes. The star rating, if that is there, yes. Product made a description that's this. If I turn it off, it is gone. I prefer to have it there. Product tabs. Right now there are three tabs. I can also make sure it's gone. Or I can click over here and show a different style. And then change the design. But I prefer um, type one. Sticky gallery. That can be interesting. Okay, let me show that really quick. If I would edit this product and I go for the dummy text generator, grab all this text and I go to the big or the short description. Sorry, the, the short description over here. Update, view, customize. Let's see, not here. I need to go to yeah single product. And then a sticky gallery. If there's a lot of text over here, this will stick with us. I like that option, but it's only uh, handy when you have a lot of text over here. In most cases, that will probably be the case. So I will turn it off. The sticky summary, if I turn that on, and, and this is longer than this, then this will stick with us. Well, I don't use that. Ajax add to cart. So right now, I say add to cart and then I can view the cart, but 
when I go to the customizer, to the single product, scroll down all the way and I say Ajax, look at this, the difference. It says add to cart and view the cart. So maybe it doesn't look that appealing. It would look more appealing if your the width of this area is wider. So let's see what we can do about that. General layout, maximum side width, narrow container max width. So we can increase this. Must have to be that small. So now if I would add it to the cart, add to cart and view the cart, that's better already. Don't you think? Oh man, the things you can change in this theme. I love it. I also really like making this tutorial. And if you like watching it and please like the video, I do my best to, to make the best tutorials possible. I hope you can feel that or smell it or see it. Okay. Well, that's it. So if I would go to this one, I also see that over here. So let's go over here, customize it. And I go to the single product. Yes, I can turn it off and then it's gone. But I turn it on. It all looks beautiful. There's a sale. Title, review, text, and then related products. Beautiful. I go to the cart, view the cart, go to the customizer. There's not much we can do over here, but what we can do, we talked about the, the product archives and the single product. I can also go to general. All the messages you get, which colors should they have? Star rating, you can change the color over here. So I could go and make the, the star rating green, but um, that's up to you. Quantity input, okay, so I go to, to the shop, to the t-shirt. How should it look? Type one, that's also an option. If you do it like this, what makes it better in my opinion is that there's more space over here. But hey, that is totally up to you. If I turn it off, it looks like that. No style. Checkout page, so let's go to the checkout page. Coupon for the form. So can people leave a coupon code? Highlights required fields. So with an asterisk, if you don't do that, <laughs> and people don't fill something in at the end of the whole process, they have a problem because they didn't fill everything. So I turn it off, on. <laughs> okay, what do I want to show? If you only sell to people without a company, you can say hide it. The second uh, address field in a lot of countries, it's not necessary. The phone field, maybe you want, don't want to collect their phone. And keep in mind, the longer this form, the more people that will bill and think, okay, this is too much information. If you have a privacy policy page, you should definitely link to that. Right now, we don't have that yet. What we can do? Close this. New page. Call this one privacy policy. Click over here. New page. Terms and conditions. Then we go back to the website. To the checkout 
customize. And then I go to the WooCommerce settings, general checkout page. And I select the privacy policy page and the terms and conditions page. And it says I've read and agreed to the website terms and conditions. And here's the privacy policy. So, so far, so good. I can also change the text over here. This text. Publish. And then we can go to the accounts page. And here I can change some information. So I go back. Account page. I can use an avatar. I have one. And I can change the site. I can also use my name. And navigation quick links. Like account and logout. Can design it, but I'm okay with how it looks. So if I go to my account and I go to downloads, I still see it's very corpse hook. I can go to my account and I can log out, and here I see something about myself that can be a little bit bigger. Account page. Perfect. So that is how you change the look and feel of your website. Uh, right now we have a really big menu. So let's take a look at that. In order to adjust uh, the menu, I go to the customizer. I scroll down all the way and I go to menus, create a new menu. And I call this one the main menu. I want to link it to the header menu one, which is this area now. I can click on next and I can add items. So I click there. I want to add the shop page, the my account page, the card page, and the checkout page. Let's see if I know the, the order. So like that. I can add new pages or categories. For instance, uh, not these categories, but uh, product categories. So I can add men and then hoodies, women, t-shirts. So what I can do, I can bring those under men, t-shirts for men and hoodies for men. Publish. And sometimes it can be a little bit clunky. If it doesn't work for you, you can close this. Now you see looks like that. I can adjust it later. But if I go to the back end to menus, this works can work a little bit better. For instance, with this area. <laughs> so um, whatever you prefer. You know, we'll talk about categories and stuff later. Right now I want to bring it back to the way it was. Save the menu. So now it looks like that. Now I want to look at this area at the t-shirt. It's in the center and maybe I want it to be at the left and at the home page or the shop page, catalog page. It's at the left. I don't like it, especially since there's no padding or margin. So uh, let's go to the settings. So I go to WooCommerce variation swatches from card flows. That's funny. My own tutorial. <laughs> wow. Bad hair day. But um, they probably liked it, so they placed it over here. Awesome. Let's go to the settings. I enable it for the product page, for the shop page. And I go to the global styling. Let's see. I want to bring it to the center. Shop page styling. Alignment in the center, in general. Okay. How to? Also, I might go to the home page and now it should be in the center. Also here. So that's how you can fix that. What I want to do now, I want to import a few products. If you want to follow along with that, go to the back end to products, import, choose a file, go to image tutorial, WooCommerce. 22 game console products. 
by now you know how to import multiple sort of products uh, with variations, uh, physical, digital, all that stuff. So now it's a matter of importing all the, or importing or making all the products you want. If you follow along with a big web shop, you can import this. So I click on continue. This is all fine. Run the importer. The only thing is then we need to get the images and link them manually. If you want to use the same images I use, you can go to consolelivery.com and grab all those images. But uh, that's up to you. I cannot share those with you because they are not mine. It's another, another tutorial I've made. We're going to make something similar in this tutorial, but this is a paid theme, a premium theme. And we're going to make use of a free theme. We're still making use of a free theme. But I want to fill the website with uh, products. Because that looks better. Awesome. 22 products are imported. View the products. And since I already, uh, I'm not sure, I also uploaded all the media stuff. But maybe product images are linking. No, they're really, okay, awesome. So what you actually need to do before you import those, you need to download all these images and then upload them to your media library. So you save this and go to media, add new, and you drag it over here. That's how it works. And then you import them and then everything is linked. So now if I go to the website, ladies and gentlemen, Wow, so much more products. Awesome. If I don't like the look of you, I can go to the customizer. Then I go to WooCommerce, product archives, design. Well, let's see, card options. And over here, one by one aspect ratio of the image it seems to be better but here it looks weird if i want to fix this oh wait or, or there was a, another image on page one which i uh, am referring to this one so this looks a little bit like okay i don't see the whole playstation i don't see the whole box how can we fix that i click on it i edit the product then I go to the product image, I click on edit image. Now I can crop it. So I can say, crop it like that. Crop, save, set product image, update, view the product. Okay, now it looks like that. And if I go to the home page, It looks better than before. So that's how you can adjust an image within WordPress. Okay. Everything looks great so far. Congratulations on what you have achieved so far. Now let's talk about the sidebar over here. In order to make the whole process for the client or for the prospect client, the, the website visitor better, let's work with a sidebar. What is a sidebar? A sidebar is a, an area, a sidebar in your uh, shop page that helps people to find the products they are searching for. And you can take it as far as you want. I will show you a few options and then I will show you how to make a sidebar with sidebar widgets that will make the whole buying process on your website easier. Let's go. First, please like the video. Maybe you come to the point right now, like, okay, I'm able to like it now. I like it, but I, I just need that last reminder. Like, Hey, now, since 30 is telling me, hey, can you like it? I'm like, okay, now I'm ready. So that's why I'm asking you again, like the video if you like it. So uh, let's create a sidebar with widgets. In order to add widgets over here, we can go to the customizer. And I can scroll down all the way. And here at the core, we can go to widgets, WooCommerce sidebar. I got it. Then I can add a block, also known as a widget. I click on browse all so I can see them all. 
If I scroll down, there are a few WooCommerce related ones. Here is WooCommerce. So first I can have product search if I want to. There it is. If you click over here on the three dots, show more settings. There are a few other things you can adjust. I go back. I don't need this one. I just want to show you how to add them. I want to go for filter by price. So I can also search and then you see filter by price. And there you go. Click over here, sorry, on those three dots, show more settings. No, it's okay how it is. Now I can filter this and if I release it, I see all the uh, products that are within that price range. I need to publish it first. So if I close it, I can say, you know what, everything until 407 and everything above that will not be shown. So right now there's 349. If I bring this below 349, it's not visible anymore. So that's the price filler. What I don't like right now is that the, the width of our website, it's really wide. If I want to narrow it down, I can go to the customizer, go to general layout, it's 1290. I can make it 1140, a little bit more narrow, close it. So then this is also less wide. I prefer that. What I also would like is that those filters are in a separate area instead of seeing the background through it. So I'm going to go to the customizer, to the sidebar, and there I can change the look and feel of the sidebar. I prefer that one or that or that, but I prefer type two. And then I scroll down and I want to separate all the widgets and make a sticky sidebar. Publish, close. So right now, if I scroll down, this will stick with us. How cool is that? I think it's cool, especially again for a free theme, mind blowing. Okay, go to the customizer again. What else can we do? We can add more widgets. For instance, click on the plus. I can go four. mini card or just a card so i can also again search over here card and then i can drag it on top if i want to so this right now what is in my card so i can bring it on top or all the way down and i can hide it if it's empty so right now it is visible but if i would get everything out of it if i remove this this will be gone you see but if I add something, I go to the shop, then it's visible again. Customizer, I want to show all the categories. So I go to widgets, WooCommerce sidebar, click on the plus, and I search for all the categories. How categories? Now it should be visible again. <laughs> categories list or product category list, even better. Okay. Show more settings. Show the product count. Yes, show category images. Well, I prefer not. I don't use those. Show the hierarchy. So if I turn it off, everything will be like that. Do I want to show empty categories? I prefer not. So it looks like that. And again, we can play around with the order. Publish. I have to say, I think the, the, the WooCommerce 
sidebar widgets are quite limited. By the way, I don't want to have this filter or this uh, sticky bar anymore. Uh, but you can get plugins that can give your website extra functionalities. So specific widgets. Well, first, let me go to the sidebar settings. I can also decrease this area. 27 is great. Change the sidebar gap. Also bring it to pixels. Make it also 20, just like this area over here. Then I can narrow that down maybe. Let's make this 20 between every widget. I don't want to have a sticky sidebar anymore. And if I would have, how much should the offset be? 50 or less. So again, also over here, I could say 20, but I don't want it or I want it and I use it for the last widget. So now this taste, then at the end, it sticks with us. Well, that's something interesting. So I will uh, use that and then I want to show two widgets that will stick with us. Okay, this is still too long. Okay, so what I can do, let me show you. I go back, I go to the widgets and I want to bring the, the categories totally up. And now when I scroll down, the filter by price and the card will stick with me. Really nice. So what you can do, you can add more, for instance, a featured product. Of course, you can select one over here. Coaching call, for instance, done. More options. Show the description, show the price, fix background if you want to. You can decide where to, to, to fix, focus on uh, in the background. And as I said before, you can bring it up, bring it up. So it will not stick with you. But if you want to take it a step further, I have a tutorial about that, how you can create, uh, if you go to ferdicorp.com forward slash CB, hit enter. This is Croker block. If you go to solutions and to the e-commerce shop, view the demo. You go to the shop page, look at this. It's at the left, but now you can have a beautiful search area, product categories, and if you select them, it means that we're searching for a dress in the jeans. So you can make super cool filters based on the product categories. So I can also, also only go for jumpers and sweaters, and then I see seven products over here. But while, what else we can uh, filter based on the length, on the size. So I can turn it off and say everything in the size XL is something I'm interested in. And all the clothes without XL in stock will not be shown. We can filter based on the color, green, green, green. If you want to learn how to create something like this or based on the brand or the rating or the featured products, you can go to YouTube and search for WooCommerce Croco Block Filters 30. Font Filters. And there I will show you step by step how to create something like that. So blue, black, all those filters you saw over here, really valuable. So if you want that, you can get it over here. But uh, for me, I'm fine with this. I see two things I want to change. If I take a look at the amount of images or uh, products I have 25, I don't need this. If I only have 25 products, if you have more products and it's handy, but right now I don't think it is. And the second thing is I want to change this color. So I go to the customizer, click on edit. No, that's not working. I scroll down, I go to widgets, WooCommerce sidebar. I click over here, three dots, remove. Also this one. And I go back, back. 
I go to the sidebar and I bring it back to the entire sidebar. It will be sticky. Then the second thing, design, if I hover over it, I think it can become blue and stay blue. Close. Awesome. If I go to coolblue.nl, I see this. If I go to ball.com, also a Dutch website, and I order a few things, I definitely want that too. I see this. Over here, there's no drop down. Over here, there is when you click. So we can decide what we want. If you go to Amazon, I put something in the card. I click over here and I also go to the shopping cart. So I want something similar. How can we get it? I go to the customizer, to the header, and here you can drag the card item between menu and search and there it will appear and at once you see how it looks so what i see over here is the price i don't see that over here i don't see that over here i don't see that over here those people of door or those companies want to make a big profit the more profit the better so three big web shops not having the number over here says something that I probably also should not do that if I want to maximize the profit, assuming I sell really good stuff that will really benefit the buyer. So what I can do, I can click over here or I can click over here on the cart and I can configure it. So there's the icon batch and turn it off and then there's no batch anymore. I want to turn it on because that's what I also see over here, over here and over here. I also see the same kind of icon. And right now I have this one. So I want to change it to type two because that looks similar. I want to make the icon a bit bigger as I see on the other websites. And then I don't want to place the total amount next to it. So I turn it off for all devices and now it's gone. Then we have the card drawer. When I hover over it, it looks like this. So let me add something. To the card i want to change this dark background to a lighter one so let's see where we are card drawer the top offset let's start with that i want it to be on the line so not above it so i increase this and then i check it and wow this is perfect so perfect on this line okay 24 for me design the font color is white. So what I want to do, I want to change the background color, not to white because I, then I don't see anything, everything anymore, but I, later I want to change it to white. Now I see, I need to change this and this, otherwise I do not see it and this and this. So the font color, I want it to be dark. And then the subtotal, I want it to be dark. Okay, and now I want to make this white. Am I happy with this? I can get rid of things. And I can add things to the card. And then they appear over here. If we add more things. So it looks like this. I can view the card or I can go to the checkout. Well, I, I love this. This makes it so much better. So step by step, we're getting further and further. And I hope you're really happy with uh, how things look so far. This is something else that makes me really excited. Uh, we're going to talk about coupon codes. So we have a, a website up and running. It's beautiful. It's not totally up and running. We, we're going to talk about other things like payment methods and uh, taxes and shipping costs. We're going to 
work on that. But right now we're going to talk about coupon codes. And with coupon codes, you can take your whole online shopping business to a whole nother level. Oh man, I'm going to talk about it later, but let me show you right now or talk about it right now that when you have an email list, for instance, uh, you can give people discount. And then when they uh, get the discount, they are subscribed to your email list. And then imagine you have 10,000 people on your email list and you send them an email like, hey, for the first 100 people, there is a discount of 20% for the people for the first 100 people when they spend at least $50. You have no idea if all those 100 people then buy things on your website for more than $50. That's already $5,000, I think. At least what people will spend just with one email. That is possible. Okay, I'm going to talk about it uh, later, how you can apply this and what is possible. And now let's start with that. How to create coupon codes within WooCommerce. In order to create a coupon code, we go to the back end, then we go to marketing coupons. And I'm going to create my first coupon by clicking on this beautiful purple button with white text, create your first coupon. And I can generate a coupon code. And now I can use this code. I go to the website holding command or control on a PC. I can go to the card and then I can place my coupon code here and apply the coupon code. Well, we need to assign some settings to this coupon code. What happens when people fill in this coupon code? Here in general, we can choose a discount type, the fixed card discount or percentage discount. So I can say you get $10 of discounts. If I publish it and I use a code and I apply the coupon, Really easy. The total is now $10 less. So it's working. But what happens? Look at this. If I get rid of this all and I go to the shop and I go for the cheapest product. Let's see if I would go for ebook, add to the cart view the card and I apply the coupon code, coupon code, it's already applied. So I just pay $9.99. Well, that's 50% off. That's a lot. So what I can say in the description, I can say, get $10 of discount when you spend at least $35 or $35. So what I can say now here at users, Restriction the minimum spent needs to be 35. So now if I refresh the page, it says, sorry, it seems that coupon code blah, blah, blah is invalid. It has now been removed from your order. Why? Because the minimum spent for this coupon is 35. How cool is that? That it's saying that if you want to change this color, go to the customizer to WooCommerce general messages. And then here I can change the background color to something more red. Let's try it again. Um, wow, my eyes. Oh, it's so bright. Wow. So that's what you can do. Let's go back to general. Fixed car discount. I can allow free shipping. So as soon as people fill this in, this coupon code, they also get free shipping. And I can say that this is uh, valid until the latest day of July. And after that, it's not possible anymore to use it. So now I can send an email to my email list saying, Hey guys, if you want to buy something on my website, I have a $10 discount coupon code. If you want to use it, you need to spend at least $35 and then you get $10 off. I can also change it to a percentage, but we'll do that later. Uses restriction. Minimum spend is 35. You can also say above $2,000. You don't get the discount anymore. You can also say uh, only for individual use. So you cannot use multiple coupon codes on top of each other. You can also exclude it for sale items. So if I turn this off and I update it and I go to the shop and I go for the hoodie, I add it to the cart. It's a sale. So as long as there's at least one sealed item in or one item on sale, 
it will not work. Even though you have a lot of other products that are not on sale, sorry, this coupon is not valid for sale items. So that's what we said over here. And now, if you would try it again, it works. How cool is that? What else? We can only they say that it's only for certain products for a hoodie. So if I close it, it says it's not been it's not valid anymore. The minimum spend is 35, but at the other hand, when I go to the shop and I buy something else, it's also not valid because it's only valid for the hoodie. So this coupon is not applicable to select products. So I can also send an email to my email list, buy this hoodie, special deal. And then only when people buy the hoodie, they can enter that coupon code. Awesome. And I can also rename this, call this hoodie 10. Update. And then the question is, do they also work with lower capitals? So let me refresh the page. It's not there anymore. But now if I say hoodie, then without capitals, does it work? Yes. So it doesn't matter if you use capitals or not. It still works. So let's go to the uses, usage restrictions. I can also exclude products. So it's for everything except for the hoodie, or I can include certain categories. The so only products within that category can make use of this code coupon or exclude certain categories. And I can also say only people with a Gmail account can make use of that. And then there's the third tab. I can say that the user limit per coupon is 100. So only the first 100 people can use it. And I can say that the limit is that every person can use it only twice. So you cannot use it three times being the same, the same user. If I would bring this to one, that means that everybody can use this for one time. So I can send an email saying, Hey, for the first 100 people, there's $10 of discount when you spend at least $35. So that's how you can configure that. You can also change it to percentage. So I can say 10%, you get 10% of discount when you spend at least $35. Let's see how that will work out. I go to the website, to the shop and I buy something expensive this one add it to the card view the card and now if i apply let's see hoodie 10 so let's let's say uh 10 percent copy this when people enter 10 percent look at this 10 percent 79 dollar 90 will be removed and when people buy something else You see again, still $102.70, which is 10% of this amount will be removed. So you can do percentage fixed or a fixed product discount. So that's uh, a fixed product discount for a certain product, but you can also use that uh, same principle for uh, users restrictions by selecting the product you want to apply it on. But since we changed it to a discount, we can go to users limits limits and you can limit the amount of items. So right now we have one, two, three items. If I go to the t-shirt and I go for the M, -M add it to the cart, XL white, add it to the cart, view the cart. We still have 10% of discount, but if we say only use it for five products, then it will change. It's the five cheapest products. So let's, let's test this. Okay. Now we have nothing. I go to the shop and I go for a t-shirt. Add it to the cart, view the cart. I use 10%. And now I get $14.99. If I would increase this, look at this. Nothing changes. 
Why? Because it's for the five cheapest products. So let's do two things. First, this is 10%. I want to add $10. Get 10. I don't have to, even have to say what happens. So this is a fixed, fixed card discount. No restrictions. It works every single time. And then I go to the other one, 10%. I go to the second tab. And I want it to be used in conjunction with other coupons. So we have 10% and $10. So now if I go to the website, we have nothing yet in the filter. So let's go for a t-shirt. Add to the cart. View the cart. Okay, let's add one more. Now, I can say $10. And on top of that, I can say 10% apply. 43.98 and that says that it doesn't matter in which order it will be applied, but they can be used together. And now if I go to one of the coupons, so marketing coupons, I go for the $10 and I say it cannot be used with other ones. Refresh. And I say $10. And 10%. It says, sorry, coupon $10 already has been applied and cannot be used in conjunction with other coupons. So that's how it works. This is a great way to make a lot of money in a short amount of time. So two more ways on how to use this at a coupon coaching madness. Get $50 off on your first coaching call with 30. So I can go to uses restriction. Oh, let's make this 50 and then say this is only for the coaching call. And people can use it only one time because it's only for the first coach call. So if I would use this, add to the cart, view the cart, and then I paste it here. And then I get 50% 50, 50 discount. And the other one, the thing we can use it for is marketing coupons. I can call this one free shipping and people get free shipping. That's it. So I go for a Nike hoodie, go to the cart, apply this code. Uh, I mean, free shipping. And now it says coupon free shipping, free shipping. So. If that will be shipping, it will be free. So that's what you can do with coupon codes. When you sell physical products, you need to ship them somewhere. If you sell digital products, you don't. They are just digital. You don't have to send them somewhere. They're available at once. But if you're selling physical products, they need to be sent somewhere. So I'm going to talk about how you can assign certain countries or all the countries in the world. You can assign specific countries or exclude countries where you want to sell to and for every specific country, you can have their own uh, shipping cost. And I will show you right now how we can configure that. So it will all be automated based on weight, based on the price or based on the country. Yes, let's go. <laughs> in order to configure shipping in our website, we go to the back end to WooCommerce settings. And first we need to make sure where we want to sell to. So here are selling locations. I want to sell to specific countries just for the sake of the tutorial. So I choose the United States and I use the Netherlands. Awesome. Ship to all the, all the countries you sell to. So I save it. And then I want to go to shipping. I want to add a shipping zone, but I want to use, uh, if I click on add shipping zone and a shipping method, I see three options, flat rate, free shipping and local pickup. Well, I want to have another one and I need to have a plugin for that. So I go to plugins, add new and I search for 
table rate and it's from Octolize. I click on install now and what it does, it helps you to calculate shipping based on the price or the weight of the order and also depending on where you sell to. So if you sell to the Netherlands or to Canada, you can have a different shipping rate than when you sell to the United States. So I really like this option. So let's uh, go back to shipping, shipping zones here in the WooCommerce settings, shipping, shipping zones. I want to add one. I want to start with the United States. I can select regions. Well, I want to select the whole country. For the whole country, I want to have the same rates for shipping. doesn't matter if you ship products to Miami or to Kansas, everything will be the same. If you want to be specific, you can select it over here. But I want to use the whole United States. And then I add a shipping method. And this time there's a new one, the fourth one, flexible shipping. I click on add shipping method. I click on shipping, flexible shipping again. I want to rename this to UPS because in the United States, I will use UPS as a carrier. No description because I already have it over here. I want the, the shipping to be taxable, but I want to exclude the, the, the shipping cost from the taxes. So it will be shown later at the checkout. But on the card page, the taxes will not be added to the shipping cost already. It will be done at the checkout. Free shipping requirements. Well, minimum order value when people buy for at least $200, they get free shipping. Scroll down and close this. Uh, I can do two things. I can create the conditions based on the weight. So if the weight is from zero to one LBS, what do people need to pay for shipping? And then you need to go to all the products all in command. For instance, the Nintendo Switch. I go to shipping and I can add the weight and then based on the total weight of all the products people buy on your website, they pay a certain amount of money for the shipping. Well, I prefer what I see everywhere is the price. I never, never see this based on the weight. So I use price. From $0 until 90.99, people have to pay $4.95 in the United States. New rule, price, tap from $20 until 49.99, people will pay $7.95. From 50 until $199.99, people will pay $12.95. And then another one, it's not necessary. So, okay, let's get rid of this one. Uh, let me save it. I can delete this one. And I, I said, so from $200 on, that's what I said over here, the shipping is free. This is only for the United States. So when people go to your website and they add things to the cart, things that are physical. I can view the card. Okay, let's get rid of all the uh, coupon codes. It says the shipping needs to be calculated based on where I come from. And then people can select the Netherlands or the United States because I said I sell only to those two countries for the sake of the tutorial. So people can search for the country Netherlands. Let's do the United States. Update, and then what we will see, free shipping, why we are above $200. So if I would get rid of this one, now I pay $12.95. Let me show you why. WooCommerce, settings, shipping, United States, UPS, over here. The total amount is $69.98, that's in between 50 and 199. So I have to pay 12.95. If I would spend between $20 and 40.99, by getting rid of this one, I pay 7.95. Why? Between 20 and 4.99 is 7.95. So in that way, oh, this is amazing. We can calculate shipping, but it's only for a certain address. But what I really like over here is the option. I scroll up, up. 
display the notice when the amount the, the, with the amount left free for shipping. This is amazing. You only actually I want to read this text. So what I will do, I will type it over here. You only need percentage one dollar or s more to get free shipping. So let me cut it, paste it. Let's say test. Okay. Save the changes. Let's refresh this. Say to update. You only need $120 more test. So I will get rid of the test area. Why do I type this in? If I don't type this in, let me cut it and I save it. There's a small glitch showing, uh, not showing a space over here. Or maybe it's working now. It is working. It is working. So I don't need to fill in anything over here. But before there was a, a small, small glitch. So there was no space over here. Awesome. They, they fixed it. How cool is that? So this can motivate people. It will motivate me always, especially when it's only $20 left. <laughs> Spend five more cents to get free shipping. Well, in that case, I will buy something. And then there's free shipping. No shipping options were found. Okay. This is a glitch because over here we said minimum order value should be 20, 200. So in that case, I go over here to the price and I say from $200 on. It is free. So just to make it sure, refresh, and then it says UPS free. So that's why I just started with the, the, the fourth one, but I was like, hey, maybe fix it also because I already said it over here. So it's, it's double, but uh, it's working. So this is how it works for the United States. So what I need to do now, I need to go to shipping, shipping zonas, add a new shipping zona. And this time I say the Netherlands and then I select the Netherlands Add a shipping method, flexible shipping. Okay. 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 Again, 200 or maybe here it's 300 for the Netherlands because there are different rates. I turn this on, I leave it as it is. And then again, price from zero until 1999. You pay six ninety five. So in the Netherlands, it's, it's a bit more expensive. Maybe the the my company is in the United States, so sending it from the United States to the Netherlands is more expensive. So forty nine ninety nine is twelve dollar ninety five. Or let's let's use different numbers five ninety five, eleven ninety five. So you can see the difference better. From fifty until one ninety nine point ninety nine. Let's say. This it is fourteen ninety five, and then two more from one hundred until one ninety nine point ninety nine. It is sixteen point ninety five, and from two hundred to two hundred ninety nine point nine nine. It's ninety ninety five, and then from that point on, it is completely. Free. Save it. So now I'm over here with this beautiful product, six of them, and I change the address. Right now it's free because it's above 200. But if I sell it to the Netherlands, or ship it to the Netherlands, I need to pay 90.95. Why? Because it's between two and 300 euros or dollars. That's what I said over here. If the price is between 200 and 299, this is what you will pay. So that's awesome. Now we can configure this for, for every country you sell to and it's all automated. So that's how we can work with shipping. And as I said, you can do it based on the weight, but I never see that for all the websites I made. I never had to do that based on the weight. So I always use the price. And if I bring it down, it says you need $140 more to get free shipping. But if I would change it to the United States, 
I already have the free shipping. So how cool is that? I think it's pretty cool. That's how you can deal with shipping. Yes, here's my favorite subject. Let's talk about taxes and not the state taxes. Now let's talk about taxes, paying money to the government, money that we've earned and paid to the government. Wow. I think it's a good thing, although it hurts sometimes, especially in the Netherlands, we pay around 45% taxes of everything we earn, but our roads are really good. Our healthcare is really good. So, and it's better to give than to receive. So, Hey, it is what it is, but uh, it's important to, to calculate this or let WooCommerce calculate this on your website. And I will show you right now how we can do it. We can set it up manually and we can set it up automatically if you're from the United States. So let me show you both ways. Okay. In order to configure text, we need to go to the back end. But before I do that, I go to this product over here. In order to make the calculations easier, I want to edit this product and change the price to $100. So we can see or calculate easier what the taxes will be. So if I go to the product, I add it to the cart, view the cart. Right now, there is no taxes applied yet. So it stays $100. If I go to the checkout, it stays $100. So let's turn on the taxes. I go to WooCommerce settings, I scroll down and over here, enable taxes. Yes, I save it. And now there's a new tab over here called tax. Awesome. There are a few options. Those are all fine. So I leave it as it is. There is um, standard rates, reduced rates and zero rates. So zero rates sometimes is for medicine and stuff um, in the Netherlands or in my shop. I don't use it. I have the normal rate and the reduced rate and the reduced rate can be for books. And other stuff I know only about books. So I go to the standard rates and then I want to insert a country code, Netherlands. And then in the whole Netherlands, we have one tax applied and that's 21%. And the tax can be called tax or VAT. I also include the shipping, save the changes. And then there's also the reduced rate. So I insert a row, Netherlands. The reduced rate for books is nine. Save the changes. So if I go to the website and I go to the cart, it is still $100. Why? If I go to the checkout and it changed the address to the Netherlands. And now $21 is added. So if I go to the cart again, subtotal is $100. And then the VAT is $21 and the total will be $121. And then $21 goes to the government. Why is it displayed like this? Why on my website do I not see the prices inclusive of taxes, but exclusive? Because let me show you here at the back end at WooCommerce settings tax. It says prices entered with tax. No, I will enter prices exclusive of tax. So that's why I see $100 over here. This is ideal if you're only selling to companies because then people know at the end at the checkout, I need to pay extra money, but I will get that money back from the government because it's 20% of 21% of taxes. If you're selling to people without a company, then it's better to include taxes. So what will happen now? I save the changes. What will happen is that the price of the 60 minutes Koji call will still stay the same. But now out of that $100, there's 21% of taxes. So people that buy this, they still pay $100, but my profit is $82.64. So that's the big difference. Do you want the taxes to be included in the amount you decided that the product was, or do you want it to be excluded? So in this case, my profit is 82 and in this case, my profit or margin is $100. So that's up to you. Uh, when I sell to people without a company, I always say yes, inclusive of tax. And then still when people buy this as a company, they still can get the 
taxes bad back, but then you have less revenue. Yes, so that's how it works. So I go back to the standard rates and now I insert a row and I say USA or US and I say the taxes there is 10%. That save the changes and the reduce rate is 5. Okay. Now, if I buy the same thing, but this time, now I buy it from the United States. Look at this. It's different. Why? Because the, the difference in taxes. So depending on where you come from or depending on where you ship to. So I would ship it to the Netherlands because that's where I live. People from the United States would ship it to the United States because that's where they live. Based on what people choose, the taxes are different. And that's a great thing you can do using WooCommerce. So let's talk about a few other settings. I go back to the back end to WooCommerce settings, taxes. We work with standard rates, but we also can work with reduced rates. So for instance, a normal physical hoodie, a Nike hoodie falls under the standard rate, but the reduced rates is for books, for instance. So that's 9% in the Netherlands and in the US, uh, I said it's 5%, I'm not sure, but uh, just to show you for the sake of the tutorial how this works, we can go to your products. And if there's a product that falls under the, the reduced rate, so for instance, books in the Netherlands are cheaper, have a, have a lower rate. So I go to my book. I know it's a, a digital book, but let's assume, let's pretend it's a physical book. Because it's a physical book, I have to pay less taxes. So what I can do here at general, I can go to tax status. It's taxable, but the tax class it's reduced. So let's, let's not save it yet. So I close this. Uh, I go to the shop and I add this book, add it to the cart, view the cart. Right now the taxes is, let's see in the United States. So let's go to the checkout and change it to the Netherlands. I go back to the cart. Right now the tax is $3.47, but if I say it is the reduced rate and I update it, look at what happens. The taxes for this product will not be $3.47, but $1.65 because it's only 10% instead of 21% or even 9% in the Netherlands. So that's how you can deal with different products. So if I would add something else, one from $100. Let's go to the checkout. You see here is the 9% and here's the 21% for this product because there are two different products I bought. So that, that's something you can see over here at WooCommerce settings, tax, and then reduce rates. And over here I say tax. But the standard rates, I say VAT. So what I can say over here is 21% VAT, 10% VAT. Save it. Then I go to the reduce rates. I can say 9% VAT and 5% VAT. And then over here, it will be a little bit more clear. That this is the 9% VAT, this is the 21. So that's how it works. There are a few other things we can do. Let's go to the cart and get rid of this one. Only show this one. So now you need to keep in mind, are you selling to customers without a company or to companies? Well, right now I'm talking about XVAT. So on my shop, this is not $100 anymore, but it's shown in XVAT. And when people buy it, it's a total, it's a total of $100 as you see over here. Well, since I'm buying to people without a company, that's my main focus. I need to go to the WooCommerce tax settings. So I go to the tax tab. So, so there are two things I want to keep in mind. We can enter prices with tax and then we say yes. So the tax is included. If I say no, look at this, it will say 100 
and then this is 121 so it will be more expensive if i say yes it is cheaper it's 100 dollars. that means that the tax is calculated in the product so when you change something over here the price will change for the buyer but you can also change things over here display prices in the shop excluding of tax or including of tax what i want is that the total is still 100 dollars, so that the, the tax is included in the total price of 100 dollars. so in that case i need to say yes our enterprise is inclusive of tax but how do i want to display this right now if i go to the home page i don't see 100 dollars. i see 82 dollars 64 and then in the end it's 100 i want my prices to be shown including the taxes and that's what i can change over here Whatever I change over here, that will not change the price. So I say include the tax, but it still will be $100 also over here. But now if I go to the checkout, the, the total is still $100. So that's the big difference. If you change something over here, it will also change the price. If you change it over here, it will only change the display. But at the end of the day, people will stay uh, pay the same amount. The only thing is, is it shown including the tax? Or excluding tax. If you do excluding tax, you can also say that over here, X that, and then everywhere on your website, it will say X fat. So on your shop, X fat, X fat, X fat. I don't want to do that. If you sell to a company, you also don't have to do that. But if you sell to companies, I would say excluding tax, and yes, enter the prices inclusive of tax. What I want to do, I want to display all the prices, including tax. So the customer does not get surprised at the end. So over here, when they see it's $100 and they go to the checkout, it's still $100. So it doesn't matter if a company buys this or a customer without a company, the end price will, will be $100 and tax is included in this $100. So companies can get their money back. What else? Calculate tax based on the customer shipping address or the customer billing address or the shop page address. Well, I would always say the customer shipping address because that is where the taxes will be calculated. If I send this to the Netherlands, there's a different tax that needs to be applied than when I send it to the United States. So I use this one. Shipping tax classes is based on card items. If you only have the standard rates, then you can say standard. But as I said, uh, you can sell books and in that case, you can give each product a different tax class. So I would say shipping tax class based on the card items. Rounding, really important, round tax at the sub subtotal level instead of per line. I can explain this to you if I would buy a lot of products. I go to the shop, Nike hoodie, add it to the card, let's do a few. I go to the shop, a few shirts. Go to the shop and buy this one. And I go to the checkout. What can happen is that for every price, taxes will be calculated. And then on top, you have the total amount. But what I prefer is that this will all be uh, added on top of each other. Then on, based on this price, the taxes will be calculated and not per line. If you do it per line, you can get some errors and, and miss some cents here and there. So I prefer to round the tax as a subtotal level. So based on this price, the taxes will be paid. We talked about this and this and this. Display tax totals itemized or as a single total. Do you want to show the tax after every price or only below the sub level? Well, since we're not working with taxes anymore, I cannot show that, but I would say itemized. So for every product you see what the taxes is. I like it that way. But what if you're selling to the whole United States and every state has their own rates? Well, then you can go to taxjar.com forward slash states. Now you can see everywhere what the taxes rate is. So you can fill that in, but let me show you a better way how to automate this or the United States. So you don't have to fill in everything manually. You can also make use of auto taxes. Let me show you how to turn that on. In order to automate the taxes for the United States, we can go to plugins, add new. 
and I search for WooCommerce tax. And I can click over here. Shipping and tax can both be automated. So that's what we're going to do. Activate. I need to install Jetpack and connect. It says the setup is complete. And now I can go to WooCommerce settings, tax, automate taxes. I can say enable automated taxes, save the changes. And now everything will be done for us, which is better in my opinion. When you create a web shop, you need to have certain legal pages, information about what to do when a product is not good and people want to return it. What's the policy about that? Uh, what about the disclaimer? What about an affiliate marketing disclaimer? If you're selling a, uh, ooh, affiliate marketing products, legal pages, legal pages, legal pages, super fun. Uh, let's talk about that and how to create them. And we're not going to create them right now, but in the end of the tutorial, I will talk about chat GPT and with chat GPT, you can also create some legal pages. Yes. Okay. Let's go. In order to create the legal pages, we go to the customizer. Then we go to we scroll down all the way to menus. I create a new menu and I call the menu legal. I do not place it anywhere over here. I click on next. Add items and we already created two pages over here, the privacy policy and the terms and conditions. So I want to create a new page, the cookie policy. Add. Then the return of the kings. Now uh, the return policy, that is when people, well, what are your thoughts and your terms about people returning stuff? And then we have a this disclaimer telling like, hey, all the information on this website, no rights can be taken from that. Okay. I add those. Publish. And I want to place them in the footer. So what I will do, I hold command. So I go to the back end over here. Now I go to the customizer. I scroll all the way down. Over here, I want to edit this area. Then I click on copyright. I remove the copyright. I like the current year. I remove everything over here and I create a pipe. And then I say cookie policy pipe return policy and the disclaimer. Now I hover over here where I selected command or control K or click over here and then I type cookie. If I don't see this, I just click on page. Okay. And the second one, return policy, command K or control K. And then I say return. Okay. The third one, command K, disclaimer. There you go. Okay. Awesome. It looks like this. So I want to go to this area below, horizontal alignment to the center. Publish. And if you want to learn more about those pages, uh, I advise you to, to go uh, and hire a legal person that can do all this for you or search for which pages should I add on a web shop or commerce. And then I mean legal pages. Top 10 types of legal, top 10 types of legal pages. Nine must have legal pages for any WordPress website. And then we click over here, learn more about it. And then you can Google how you can do this. It, it's depending on what kind of products you sell and where you sell to. So if you're selling in uh, Burkina Faso, there are different terms and disclaimers and return policies than when you sell in the United States. So I cannot do it for all the country in the world. So that's something you need to do by yourself. But later in the tutorial, I will show you how you can create something for free using chat GPT. And then it is time to talk about the next subject, which is 
payment methods. It is time to talk about payment methods. People need to be able to pay and when they pay, that money should go to your bank account or to your PayPal account. How? Let's talk about that right now. In order to let people pay with credit card or with PayPal or Klarna, we can go to 30corp.com forward slash Stripe, hit enter, and you need to create an account over here. If you want to learn how to do that, I have a tutorial for that. Search for Stripe 30. There it is. It's three years old. Uh, every time I make a new tutorial, I check it and it's still up to date. The layout is a little bit different, but the principles work the same. And when you have your account up and running, then you can close this and we can go to the back end. Let me hide this. Then I go to plugins, add new. And I search for checkout plugins with a C. And there it is from checkout plugins, Stripe payments for WooCommerce by checkout plugins install now. A lot of good reviews, activate. And now I need to connect it with Stripe. So I connect it with Stripe. This is my account. I click on connect. Okay. And I want to use Stripe. And if you want to, you can also use Klarna, Alipay, but I prefer to have Stripe. Enable gateways. I want to have Apple Pay and Android Pay or Google Pay. Enable Express checkout. Okay, now I need to grab this code or webhook. Go to my Stripe dashboard. Log in, of course, and then I need to place the webhook over here. Then I need to select an event, which is charge. Select them all. And then I click on add the event, add the endpoint, then I get a key, I copy it and I don't work with the test version right now. It's in live mode. So I also turn this to live, paste it and I click on save and continue. Great. Your store is all set to accept payments. Let's customize it. Okay. So when I want to pay, I go to the checkout. It says over here, credit card stripe. I can fill in those details over here. It looks great. It says credit card stripe. And over here, pay with your credit card via stripe. That's what it's saying over here. Statement descriptor. So when people buy this, what should be placed on their statement of the credit card? I will say game consoles, consoles, the charge type is charge, save cards. So when people come back later, their card is saved and they can pay easier. Allowed cards. If you leave this empty, everything is accepted. The order status will be placed to default and the order button label pay via Stripe it says over here, pay via Stripe, or you can say pay or order when you save it and you refresh it over here. So I can also say, um, I can say pay now. Perfect. Great. So now people can buy things on our website. How great is that? I think it's really great. So we can check everything, but what you also can do, we have the express checkout. It means that something like this is uh, available on every single product page or on the checkout. So the product page, the cart and the checkout, I prefer not to use it. So I save it. But as you see, you can also use El Alipay. Turn it on ideal. So let's, let's turn on ideal, see what happens. Save it and all those other ones. So if I go to the website and I go to the Nike hoodie. I add it to the cart and I view the cart. Okay. I can proceed to the checkout and now I can pay with credit card. I see no ideal yet, but I can pay with credit card. So let me go to the back end to WooCommerce settings, payment. 
and then over here, idle is turned on. I need to manage it. Idle. It's only for euros, so I can turn it off. It's not working. But um, if you're selling euros, then it works. So if I would uh, say uh, Klarna, I turn that on and I refresh this and also can play with Klarna. Look how beautiful it looks. So if I turn a few on, SEPA, I really like the layout of this. Also only in euros. So now people can pay. Another way is using PayPal. We can configure PayPal, it's really easy to do. And then people can pay with PayPal and then the money goes to your bank account. Let's do that right now. I search for plugins, add new, and then I search for WooCommerce PayPal. And there you go, from WooCommerce itself, install now, activate. Now I need to connect my account. Of course, you need to have a PayPal account. You can create one at paypal.com and I activate PayPal. So I need to link it now by logging in, making sure I'm not a robot. Agree and connect. Awesome. I go to payments, scroll down to PayPal, turn it on. Now I go to the website. Do the checkout and there's the new option, PayPal. And within PayPal, I can also use Ideal and so forth. So uh, interesting stuff. So we can pay with credit card, Klarna or PayPal. And with PayPal, you also have other options. So now people can buy things on our website. If I go to one of the products, I see a PayPal button. If I click on that, I go directly to the checkout. The address is based on the address of the person that is logged in with PayPal. But what I don't like about this is that you buy products individually. So I want to turn it off. If you want to use it, you can. Um, let me show you another option. If I go to WooCommerce settings, payments, Stripe card processing. I go to express checkout. You can also turn it on. And if I save it, I go to the website, to a product. I can do the same over here, pay now or add to the cart. I can configure this. So if I go to WooCommerce settings, payments, Stripe, express checkout, I can also change the text. I can make it light. I can say below the add to cart button. That's what I prefer. Maybe not all capitals. Refresh. It looks like that. But again, then it's for one single product. But I also can say I get rid of it for the product page and only at the checkout I want it to be visible. And then it can be handy. So if I uh, refresh this, it's not there. I add it to the cart. I view the cart. I go to the checkout and then there we can pay now. And then based on your information at Google, it will be sent to the address that is linked to Google. I prefer not to use it. So I turn this off. I save it. And then I go to payments to the lowest one, PayPal. Enable PayPal features for a story, yes, but not the smart button. Save the changes. So now I go to a product and it just looks like this. I add it to the cart, view the cart. I can go to the checkout. I can pay with Stripe or with Klarna or any option I have in mind. And then one more thing. Again, WooCommerce settings, the more you navigate through this, the easier it becomes. PayPal. Of course, I need to turn it on at the checkout. 
Like that. And then refresh. I can pay with PayPal. When people buy things on your website, they get an email, a confirmation email like, hey, your order is in process. Or after that, they can get an email from you. Hey, we have shipped your order. You can receive it within a certain amount of time. And the look and feel of those emails are not that good. So we're going to make it better. And we're going to change the content a little bit. And I'll show you how you can do that right now. So it's time to buy something. And then I want to check what happens when you buy something and how you can change the look and feel of the emails that will be sent to the people that buy things from your website. So what I will do first, I go to the back end of the website and I will change the payment method to cash on delivery. So I do that here at WooCommerce settings, payments, and I turn off Stripe and Klarna and PayPal, and I turn on cash on delivery. Save the changes and now, when I'm about to buy something, I go to the checkout. I fill in my details. I choose cash on delivery. I read and agree to the website terms and conditions and I click on place the order. Thank you. Your order has been received. We see the order number. We see the date, the total amount, the email, the payment method and what we have bought. And now I get an email with the confirmation for myself as a website owner that I have a new order over here from buy the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5 in stock. Thank you for your order in purple. Hey Ferdy, just let you know we received your order with the number and then more details over here. This is the message I gave when people buy the Nike hoodie. They can see it over here. The subtotal, subtotal the shipping, the VAT, payment methods and the total amount they have to pay. And over here it says, thank you for using game consoles and build with WooCommerce. So we can adjust a lot of things. And it's from the email, by the way, in fairlycorpsook at Gmail. So this is the email I get because I bought this product. If I would go to my Gmail account, I see the email from Ick, which means me. New order. You received an order from fairlycorpsook. So th this is what I receive as the administrator. So I need to send this product three times to this address or to this address. Awesome. So how can I change all this stuff? Because I think it can look better. This is totally not in the style of our website. So let me do that. I go to the customizer. Why? I want to grab the color blue. So I go to the colors. I grab this color. I copy the color and I close this. Now I go to the back end to WooCommerce settings and I go to emails. These are all the emails that will be sent on different occasions. So when there's a new order, I, as the administrator, will receive email about a new order or when the order is canceled, I will receive an email or when an order is filled, I will receive an email and the customers receive all those emails depending on how they order something. So if I take a look uh, to the email I got, pay with cash upon delivery, your order is being processed. So I got this email and we can adjust that email, but first we can scroll down and change the from name because, because right now this is the from name and this is the email address. So let's change that. I prefer to say game consoles. And then the from address is info at game, game consoles.com. We can have a header image. Let's talk about it in a minute. Right now, I want to change the base color to blue, the body text to 222222. Two, 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 two. I save it. Then I go to the media and I search for the logo. This one. It's quite wide. So I copy this to the clipboard. I download it to my desktop and I want to upload it again. There it is. But this time I want to edit the image 
make it smaller. Let's say 300. I click on scale and that's it. What I want to do, I want to close this, go to that image again, copy the file, the URL to the clipboard. Then I go back to WooCommerce settings to emails. And now over here at the header image, I can place this link. And there's the footer text built with WooCommerce. I don't need that. I just want to show the site title or good luck with your game, whatever. So this looks better already. So now I want to do a new order. I buy this t-shirt, black version, add it to the cart, view the cart, proceed to the checkout. And I place the order. So now I get a new email. But this time it is not from buy the Xbox. It's from game consoles. If I click over here, it's from info at game which looks in my opinion better than this one. Awesome. Thank you for your order and look at the difference. Now there's my logo over here. Thank you for your order. The color is changed and this text is different. But wait, we can do more because we know this is the processing email. So if I go to that email again, WooCommerce settings, emails, and if I go to processing order, it says your site title order has been received. And that is what we see. Your by the Xbox series order has been received. I would prefer to say your, your order has been received. Additional content, thanks for using. And then the site URL, that's something you see over here. Thanks for using the website. So I can also say, good luck with your product. If you have any question, feel free to reach out to us. Save it. So now again, if I order something, View the cart, proceed to the checkout, place the order, and I go to my email. Now it says your order has been received instead of your buy the Xbox blah 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 order has been received. Since I bought the, the coaching call, it says go to this link to book an appointment with me. And it says, good luck with your products. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. So step by step, we can make it look better. You can take it to the next step. It's up to you to do that. How can you do that? One more thing. I go to WooCommerce settings, emails. I can go to the processing order, click on manage. And then I can say, copy the file to the theme. That's what I will do. And I save the changes. Now I go to the appearance theme file editor. So we're going to take a look at the code. Be careful with that. Don't mess things up. Then I scroll down. I go to WooCommerce emails, customer processing order. And now I can change things over here. So what I see in the email is just to let you know, if I want to change that text, I scroll down and I search for the text just to let you know receives your order. So I can also say, thank you for your order. Your order number is, and this one is order number code. We will let you know when your order is processed and on you and on its way to you. Update. Awesome. So now again, we order something. 
proceed to the checkout, place the order. So now we will see that the text over here is changed. There we go. You see, thank you for your order. Your order number is, we will let you know when your order is processed and on its way to you. Okay. When the order is received, we see over here at WooCommerce orders that there's a new order and that's being processed. So if I click over here and what I will do, I'll go to my living room where all my playstations are <laughs> and all my products. I will pack it. I will go to the post office and I will send it to this address. Then I come back to my computer and I change the status to completed. I click on update. When I do that, this person gets an email over here. Thank you for shopping with us. Hey, Ferdy, we have finished processing your order. Pay with cash upon delivery. So instead, by now you should know if you go to the settings and to emails and to completed order, I can copy the, this, the file to the theme. Save the changes, go to appearance, theme file editor, WooCommerce, emails, customer completed. I can say, good news, we packed your order and it is on its way to you. Update. I don't have to test this, but then it would say, hey, we've uh, completed your order and it's on its way to you. So in that way, you can change the colors. You can add your logo, change the name over here, change the email address, and change all the information. And that's how you can make it better. Since we ordered a few products, we can go to our account. And then I see my dashboard can take a look at my recent orders. You see them over here, all from today. This one is completed, $100, and I can view this over here. I can go to my downloads. If I would have downloaded a bot, uh, uh, an ebook, for instance, I can download it over here. I can go to the addresses. If I want to change this for the next order, I can change it over here. Account details, I can change my name, my email address, I can change my password, and I can Log out. But if I'm not logged out, logged out, and I buy something, view the card, check out. All this information is already placed, so I can order it faster. Go to the checkout faster. So that is what happens, and that's how the, your account looks. It looks beautiful. Okay, I think it's time to like, take a look at the header. But first, let's bring back all the payment methods. So I go to payments, turn on Stripe, and PayPal, and turn off cash on delivery. So right now, again, we can pay with credit card and with PayPal. Let's take a look at the header. Wow, wow, wow. You're still here. Thank you for watching everything. I hope you liked the video. And if you do that, then please like the video. Now let's talk about the header. We're going to make it look so much better with the free Bloxy theme. So let me show you what is possible. Let's configure our header by going to the customizer. This is amazing. Again, it's crazy what you can do with the free theme called Bloxy. I go to the header over here. And what I want to do, I want to bring the menu to the center, just like that. And voila, there it is. I want to bring the card to the upper row. And there it goes. I want to give, give the top row a different background color. So I click on the top row. I go to design background and I grab this color. But now this looks weird. So I hover over here. I click on the three dots or I click on the card over here. I go to design. Change the icon color to white and when people hover over it, it becomes orange. How about the batch? Blue on blue, 
So how about I make it orange and I'm inspired a bit by coolblue.com.nl with this top bar, which is blue with a light background. And then there's the header with a lot of categories. By the way, over here, the, the logo is at the top bar. I don't want that. As I said, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm not copying everything one on one. So uh, I think the batch is really big. So I go to general, change the icon size. Awesome. Then I can go back and I can go for account. I drag it over here. There I go. I prefer to have it at the right. I click on it so I can configure it. And when people click on it, what should happen? Well, I want people to go to their WooCommerce account page. I can use an avatar or I can use an icon. And if I do, I can go to design, change the icon color. Okay. Or nothing, but then people can click nowhere. So, uh, or I would do an avatar. Or an icon. I go for an avatar. Make it a bit bigger. 20, 18. Great. Publish. Now I want to have a new area over here. So I go back, go back to the menu. And what do I mean by a new area? I mean, I want to change the content over here. I want to change the menu. So I click on the main menu. I click on the cart drop down icon, the arrow down, and I remove everything. I click on add items. What I want to do, I want to close pages. And I want to go to product categories. There are quite a few. I want to have accessories, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, and then the Xbox series. There it is. And I want to have sub items. So electronics, games, Xbox series, S and X. Okay. So it looks beautiful over here as you see. Now I want to bring some order in it. Well, so I want to have PlayStation 5 over here. Then the Xbox series. Where did it go? There. Then as a drop down, I want to have Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. So now I should see a drop down. I don't see it yet. Let's bring some more order. Nintendo Switch, uh, accessories, and on below accessories, electronics, and games. Or PlayStation 5 games. Let's see. Where did they go? Okay, if you get something like this, no problem. Just publish it, close it. And go over here to the menus and there it is less buggy okay i can have more over here if i don't see the product categories i can go over here to screen options product categories and then i go over here and let me see i want to view them all cases and covers. I want to add them below PlayStation, PlayStation cases, PlayStation covers, save the menu. I go to the website and it works. Awesome. I go to the customizer because I want to customize the, the drop down. I click on the three dots over here and I go directly to the right area. I can change the type with the, the orange thing below. Or make it hover like this or like that, but I prefer to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, the item spacing, it can be a little bit less, closer to each other. Then I go to design. This all looks fine. So I want to go to the drop down, drop down. Here, yeah, drop down options. When I hover over it, then it disappears. I can also do it on a click. So it doesn't happen only when I click. I prefer hover. 
and I want to the hover effect to be a solid color. Then I go to design. When I hover over it, I want this to be light or even when I don't hover over it. So the, the background becomes white. Text should become dark. And when I hover over it, it can become orange or it can become white. And then at the background, I want it to become uh, blue like that. Okay, then I go to the text, it can be a bit bigger. I can have item dividers, drop down shadow. I can change how it appears. So um, the review effect, inner review, opacity, but I prefer default. Okay, publish. Close. So now it looks like this. So if I go to PlayStation 5, I see everything with the category PlayStation 5. If I go to cases, I see the PlayStation 5 cases. So I brought some structure over here and I really like that. There's a free plugin. Well, it's called a, a Woo search uh, and you can have an amazing search bar in your header with that. And when people search, they see examples of what they're searching for. They can see the price, they can see a, an image. And when they click on it, they go to that product. It's, it's so easy and uh, I love it. So that's why I decided to include it in the tutorial and teach you how to implement it. I go to the back end. What I want, I want to have a search area over here, a smart one, not a dumb one, a smart one. So I go to the back end, I go to plugins, add new. And I search for Woo search with R search. Advanced Woo search. Install now. This is, this is amazing. I click on activate and then I can go to the settings over here or over here, advanced WooCommerce or Woo settings. Close this and this. I grab this short code. I hold command or control on a PC. Go to the customizer. I click over here, main row. Go back and then I go for an HTML area here at the right. I click on it and I paste this. Publish. Close it. And now uh, it looks like this and it looks beautiful. Not just kidding, we need to go back and re index the table. So, a general re index table. And now refresh. I click here and I can search for play. And I see PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5. And I can see all the results and it looks beautiful. So, that's what I prefer. Let's configure it a bit further. I want to search in the title, content, SKU, short description, category, and tags. So if I refresh this and I search for the tag black, I see all the products that have the category black. And even though it's a white t-shirt, I also have a black version. So that's why I see that over here. This is all fine. Let me save it. Then I go to performance and that's fine. I go to the search form and I scroll down a bit. I want to change it to the second styling because right now it can be, no, people are not sure if this is a search area, even though you see search, but if I have this icon, it becomes even more clear. Nintendo, there you go. Here's the text. For search field, search, if nothing can be found, it says nothing found, you can change it over here, search better. So I refresh it and get this, I prefer nothing found 
after one character, it will already start searching. So if I hit the P, I already get search results or not. PL. So let's say two characters. I have search, show the loader. So when, when I'm searching, I see that. I like that. Otherwise, people are like, hey, why is nothing happening? Form styling. Okay, I save it. Then I go to the search results because if I search for PlayStation, I see all that text. I don't want that. So what I will do over here, show the description of no SKU. So refresh PlayStation it looks better. That's how easy it is. I love it. So that's a nice search area. And then over here, I want to have a menu. So I go to the customizer. I go to menu. I create a new menu menu and more information. That's how I call the menu. I, I link it to header menu too. Next, add items and I create a few new pages about us. What about us? Yeah. Maybe you want to have a block. So you can create a block page. FAQ. Frequently asked questions. A newsletter where people can sign up, get discounts and stuff. And a contact page. Publish. If you want to learn how to create all those pages, I use a beautiful tool for that free tool called Elementor. Search for WordPress, WordPress tutorial 30. Four hours long and there I teach you step by step how to create amazing pages like an about page or work, blog, contact. So, um, and if you want to learn how to create amazing blog posts, write blog posts 30. I have a more recent one. This is 11 months old. Where is it? I don't know. But um, there you can learn more about how to, to create pages like these. I don't want this tutorial to be eight hours long, but if you want to create pages like that, it's possible. Uh, we can also make use of a pre-made website. I'll talk about it later in the tutorial. Uh, right now, I'm happy with this. I go back, I go back, and I go to the header. And I want to add the menu to over here. And there it is. Now I want to configure it by clicking. I select the, wait a minute, let's publish it, close it, customize it, click over here, default, more information. Okay, then I go to design. I make it white. I get rid of the capitals. Make it less bold. Maybe even go to the top row and shrink it a bit. Okay. And then if I want to, let's see, what do I have left? can have social icons over here and I can design them. I personally prefer not to use it. I don't want people to get uh, distracted. So I don't use them here in my, in my header, um, but I can have a button over here saying okay, sometimes it's working. I click over here, maybe publish, close it, customize it again. And now it works. So I can make it like this. Go to design, make the font color white, the hover color orange, the button color, make it transparent. Also, when I hover over it, that I can change the text to 
sign up for the newsletter and get discount. Then I can have a, a link to the to the newsletter page, so I can say newsletter. And then, if you want to learn how to build a newsletter, the, the money is in the list. If you want to make money or get yeah make extra money, definitely watch this tutorial. Uh, convert Git tutorial thirty. Such an in-depth tutorial, two and a half hours, only twenty-four thousand views. I still don't get it. It made me, as you see. A lot of money already through, through the years. Uh, yeah, I, I explain in this tutorial how you can use it, but especially when you have a web shop, you can send discount coupon codes for the first 100 people and they spend at least $50. I also covered it in the tutorial how you can do a coupon codes, use coupon codes. Yeah, it can change everything. You want to give people 5% off by signing up for the newsletter and then you can send them emails like, hey, there's a discount. A beautiful way. To, to grow your business. By the way, if you like it, if I make a tutorial like this, you're watching right now, or the one about blog, making blog posts, or about making a website, all those pages, or about ConvertKit, or affiliate marketing, or Google AdSense, please like this video and subscribe for more upcoming tutorials. And uh, let's continue. So this is our header. I really like how it looks. And then there is the really important question. How does it look on a mobile phone and on a tablet? I think our website looks great. Our header looks great, but how does our header look on a mobile device or on a tablet? A lot of people these days come through tablets and smartphones. So let me show you how to optimize your header and your website for all devices. Let's take a look. I go to the customizer and I want to go to the header and take a look over here. And then by default, it looks like this. So really quick, let me show you how we can make it look like this. Uh, the cart goes over here. The account goes there. Then I will not have the menu over here, but what I can do, I can have the call to action. Sign up for the newsletter over there or in the center if you want to but I prefer at the left because this is the same that will be displayed on a mobile. So also there it needs to look okay. So actually for me, this is okay. I can go to the trigger, make it more bluish. Make an outline solid. I like a simple. But when I open it, what should appear? Well, those colors, I don't want that. So I go to the off canvas area to design and I change the background to white and then I go to the mobile menu to design, change the color to the dark one. Then I select the menu, which is the main menu. I go to the bold text and make it medium. And then I also think maybe it should be dark blue and I use Nunito Sans, also here, Nunito Sans, and then I'm happy, and over here, also looks great, awesome, maybe a bit bolder. Yes. And that's how you optimize it for all devices. How about the rest of the website? This looks great on a phone. Looks great. If I go to the t-shirt, looks like that. Add it to the cart. View the cart. Awesome. I can proceed to the checkout. So by default, everything is optimized for all devices. And here I can pay with credit cards, fill in my details and then pay. Now 
I think this is amazing. Everything looks so good in my opinion. So this is our website right now. If I take a look at the header, there are a few things I don't like and a few things I still want to mention. The first thing, if I go to the customizer, I think this text is too dark. So I go to the menu design and I change this color to dark blue. Also for the drop down, I think that's better. And the second thing over here, I don't like this orange text. So what I can do, click here, go to the type three option. Now it is displayed like this. I could do the same thing for the button. Okay, then it looks like that. And what I can do, if I go back and I go to headers, global header, I can have a sticky functionality so that only this area sticks with us or both. Only the color changes. So uh, if you want to fix that, go to the top row design, sticky state, keep it blue. Or only the top row or nothing. Well, I leave it up to you, but hey, it's a possibility. So I think our header looks amazing. Since we have a header, it's also great to create a footer. So let me show you how to create a footer in WordPress using the Bloxy theme in 2023 and 2024 and maybe 2025. Now let's take a look at the footer. I scroll down and this is my footer. Let's customize it. I click on footer. Automatically I should go down, but I don't, so I do it myself. So there's the copyright area and I want to have an area above that, in the middle row. The middle row right now has three columns. If I click over here, I can change it to four. I can change how it looks, the column spacing, the widget spacing, but it's for me enough. So I go back to the widgets and I want to drag widget area over here, one over here, two, three, and four. I see nothing yet. I want to go over here and edit the lower area by clicking here. Design background blue and then the copyright area I click on it design white white and orange like that I can narrow it down over here okay now I click on widget area one let me publish it I want to have an image and a text about my company. So I go for an image. I go to the media library and search for logo. There it is. There it is. Below, I click on the plus. I want to add a paragraph. I want to tell something about my company. Okay, that was the first widget. Widget area two. Sometimes I cannot click on it or I need to click a few times. Well, if it does work, doesn't work, click on publish, close it, customize it, and then come back and try it again. Click on the plus, I go for a menu, navigation menu, I called it one useful links or categories I select the main menu there it is and the third one again a menu this for all the legal stuff legal I select the legal menu there it is and the fourth one There it is. Click on the plus. First, I want to go for a heading. 
which is called contact pass, but it's a bit big. So I change it to H6. Perfect. And then I click on the plus below and I go for a text or a paragraph. And I start typing again. Awesome. Publish. Okay. I like it except for a few things. I want everything to align. So what I can do is a little bit advanced, a little bit. Over here, I'm at the text. So now I click over here, three dots, show more settings. I can change the, the size over here. I like the M. Oh, it's a bit big. It was good. Maybe if I turn it off, <laughs> I still can. I want to make it as big as menu. I think it's this one. So what I can do now, I can go to advanced and then additional CSS. I say contact us margin. Copy this. Then I go back and I go back and I go back and I scroll down. Additional CSS. Then I place a point. Shift left bracket. And I would like to say background. And then hashtag zero 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 to see if I have selected the right area. Okay, I want to bring this up a bit. So what I will do margin top 10 pixels and you see it goes down if I say 30 but I can also say minus 30 so let me get rid of this now now pixel perfect I can align them over here or I can say minus 20 Right. Okay. Now I would like to do the same with text contact us margin, but I change contact us to about us. I copy this, publish, go back, and then I want to assign this area, this text. there and now you see this also going back but not exactly as the other ones so i go back and back and back and i go to additional css and then i say minus 30 32 33 i would say okay it's, it's what it is okay like this we deliver consoles like playstations so everything is aligned And I can go to this one and then game consoles, more settings. I could say 25%. So it's a bit smaller and this lines up perfectly with the rest. Then I go to this whole area, the whole footer to design. I want to change the background to white, but I want to have a top row divider. Like this, and then with the color orange over the full width. And that's how it looks right now. A nice footer. Maybe I need to have the same color over here as, uh, as over here. And maybe not, that's up to us. Okay, how does it look on a tablet? On a phone.
what I can say, edit, or let's do that for the, for the iPad or the other tablets. Edit, bring it to the center, categories. Edit. And edit. And when I change something for the tablet view, it will automatically also be adjusted for the mobile view. But when I go to the desktop, it's uh, aligned to the left again. So I'm happy with this. So we now have a beautiful header and a beautiful footer. I'm really happy with what we see so far, the result. Uh, but there are a few things I think that can be done better. For instance, this gap over here, everywhere there's 20 pixels. And here's 60, maybe. Customize. I go to general layout and then I see the content area spacing. So let's bring it to 20. And that looks better. If I go to the footer, there's a lot of space over here. Customize. Edit. Column spacing, that's okay. Widget spacing is okay. Row vertical spacing. Let's bring that not to 20, that's too, not much, but um, let's see. I think 30 is great. Yes, I'm happy with this. So now it looks amazing. What else can we do? Right now, our homepage is a page full with articles. But there are a lot of websites like Amazon or the Dutch website I'm mentioning, coolblue.nl, that have a special page homepage for the products. So not a page only with products, but with categories, with the text, with a featured product. Let me show you how to create that using Elementor, a free page builder. So let's uh, get started with that. If you want to create a custom homepage over here, instead of showing all the products on the homepage, for instance, we can create something like this, coolblue.nl. This is one of the most popular web shops in the Netherlands, and it has a landing page like this, instead of a page with all the products. So it doesn't look like this, but like this. Right now we see all our products over here on the, at the homepage. If I want to create something like this, I told you already uh, we can do that, but since the container builder of the page builder I use is still in progress, I will create a separate tutorial. You can find it over here where I show you how you can create the page we're about to import. So the first thing I want to do, I want to go to the back end to pages, see if there is already a home page. There is not. So I hover over new, click on it, and I want to create a home page. I call this home. Publish, publish. Okay. Now I go over here to the website, to the customizer. Then I scroll down all the way and I go to home page settings. And I want to change the home page display. Uh, it, it needs to be a static page and then the home page will be the home page and then the post page will be the blog page. Publish, close, and now it says home page. So what I want to do, I want to use a free page builder called Elementor. It's amazing what you can do with that. I have tons of tutorials about it, but let me show you how to get it. We go to 30corp.com forward slash Elementor, hit enter. And somehow they seem to hide free page builder. So normally you could download it over here, but every time it's on, on a another place in the website. So if you cannot find it, no problem. We can close this, go to the back end of our website, 
go to plugins, add new. And then we search over here for Elementor and look at how many downloads it has. Right now it's, I think, being used on 8% of all the websites in the entire world, including Mars and the moon. 8%. How great is that? So this is the real stuff. It's uh, since I use this tool since 2018, making websites has never been easier. I activated more than 5 million installations. I skip all these steps. Skip, 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 and skip. And now I want to do a few things. Okay. Close this. Close this. Here is the still see inner sections. That means that right now it's still the old builder with columns, columns and stuff. If you want to change that, no problem. Click on the three lines over here. Click on exit. And then I select WP dashboard. That means if I go to the exit, I always go to the dashboard. I want to get rid of this area, keep it clean. Then I go to Elementor settings features. I want to turn a few features on first the Flexbox container a release candidate. So it means that it will be released soon. Active the grid container active editor top bar active that's it. And then I click on save the changes. Then I scroll down and I go to plugins, add new. And can I search for Elementor? But this time I go for essential add-ons for Elementor. I click on install now, activate. Then we need to configure a few things. I go for custom next. What I want to do, view all. And then over here at WooCommerce, I want to add all those things over here. So I click on next, 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 next. No thanks. Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's good to be congratulated now and then, even when it's not your birthday. So now I go back to the home page. I click on edit page. Now I can edit this page with Elementor. So I click on this button. Now Elementor will be loaded on our homepage. And we have the container builder. So right now it is perfectly fine. Everything uh, I can show you from scratch how to make this, but it will take maybe 30 minutes. So instead of making this tutorial longer, you can go to the description and search for the tutorial where I show you how to find the page we're about to import or search for Elementor container. Builder 30. And there you see a few tutorials from me about Elementor Container Builder. By the way, I have this tutorial. It's going like crazy. I really like that. How to create a WordPress website in 2023. It's from January 2023. And four hours about how to create an amazing website using the Container Builder. So if you want to create multiple pages for your website besides the homepage, uh, FAQ page, contact page, all those pages here. There's four hours on the container builder on how to work with that. So definitely watch it if you want to add multiple pages. Um, right now I want to import a page that looks like this one. So I go to 30 corp.com forward slash container template, hit enter. And there it goes. If I click on it, it opens a JSON file. How cool would it be if you have a child and you don't call it JSON with an A, but just JSON and it's your son. Wow. That will be such an in-depth name. So let me know if you called your son JSON based on this tutorial, 30 or whatever. So I want to import this. So I click on the folder icon over here. Before I do it, wait, wait, wait. Before I do that, I like to go to the settings and make this page an Elementor full width page. So the title is gone. Publish. That is another word for saving. And if you want to see the results, you can view the results over here. Now I click on the folder, arrow up over here. 
select a file. Now I go to my downloads. Where is the JSON file? Dot JSON downloads. There it is. WooCommerce homepage. Open. Don't show this. It's safe. Enable an import with all the settings. And then I can find it over here. So what I will do, I will click on insert, apply. And now it looks like this. Cool. We can adjust things. So I can click over here, change the image. If I want to display another product, this one, for instance, and I can play around over here. But if you want to learn how to create a page like this and adjust it, you can go to the internet and search for my tutorial about that. So I think it looks amazing. I click on publish, click on the eye so I can see the results. So now this is our homepage. So if I click over here, I go to the homepage. It looks like this, but wait, there's something else we can do. We're about to make a few drastic changes. If you want to, it's not mandatory. I'm not going to say you have to do it, but I want to show you how you can do it. What we're going to do, we're going to import a pre-made website that's already been made by a professional digital marketer slash designer, or actually a whole team that's making amazing products. The great thing is that the products you've created will still be on your website. Only the look and feel changes. I'm going to show you a few different kind of uh, websites you can import for free. And then if you want to maintain the settings you have, for instance, my blue header or top bar, my, my header, my footer, if you want to maintain that, I will show you how to export those settings and then later on import them after you imported the starter template. Wow, that's a lot of information. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to make three kinds of backups through one plugin, through a second plugin and through your web hosting provider. Because if you mess things up somehow, then we have those backups that we can restore and then everything will be fine. It's really important to backup. So that's what we're going to do first. And then I will show you how to import a pre-made website. In order to make a backup of your website, we can go to the backend and we go to plugins at new. And I search for all in one WP migration. I did not come up with this name for this plugin, but it's a really good, good plugin. Install more than five million times and it's it's really straightforward. Just click on install now, then activate it and then go to all in one WP migration export. As you see, I use it all the time, already five backups. Export to fail and it starts preparing 265 megabytes. I click on download or I click on this yeah, download game console.com and there it goes. The second option is plugins at new. And then go for WP Vivid. Install now. Activate. Okay. Then I click on backup now. Then it starts preparing. Now I scroll down. There it is from today. I click on download download it's a lot smaller than the one from all-in-one wp migration there goes the second backup and then we have hosting itself i log in i go to websites game consoles manage and then over here files i go for backups and i can generate a new backup i select it proceed and now it is creating a new Backup. So I have three backups. Really simple. If I want to import those, for instance, with all in one WP migration, I go to the website, import. I can drag this one over here and then it will import and I have my website restored. So let's install a starter template. As I explained already, we're going to import a pre made website. We have a backup. So if we mess things up, we can restore things. But right now I will show you how to create a pre-made website or how to import a pre-made website and then how to export the settings you have right now on your Bloxy website 
and then how to import them later on after you imported the pre-made website. Let me show you what we're going to do. Right now we have this website. I think it looks amazing. If you prefer, you can also have the shop page as your landing page. And then there's another option, a starter template. It will overwrite all these settings over here. So if you don't want that, maybe not use this option. But what we can do, we can go to the customizer to get the best of both worlds. Then I go to general, manage options and export customizations. All the settings, export. Okay, there it goes. Close it. Close this. It will maintain all the products we have, so that's a good thing. So let's go to the website, to the backend, to Bloxy starter sites. Now we can install one of those starter sites. The ones you see are all free. So if you see one you like, you can import that one or you can take a look at the preview and see how it looks. Well, I found one, a multiple. But I see there's one that's selling uh, phones and stuff, gadgets. So I click on preview and then our website will look like this. How cool is this? And it also has uh, other products about us or other pages. And then we can uh, adjust the information, adjust the content, the video, the testimonials. This is only all fully created for us. It even has blog posts. Look how, how beautiful it looks. Still, still using free tools. I love it. So what I can do, I can click on import. I don't install a child theme. I click on next. I use Elementor as the page builder. I click on next. Next. And you know what? I don't need the contact form. Next. Install. And now our new website will be installed. And that's why we created backup. If we somehow mess things up, then we can restore our backups. And if one backup somehow in a small percentage case <laughs> does not work, then we have two other backups. So I always like backups when I uh, adjust or make big changes. But I assume everything will be all right. And then later on, if we see how it looks, I can still import the settings we already configured in the Bloxy theme customizer. Now I'll show you step by step, of course, how to do that. It is finished. It's imported successfully. I click on view the site. And now it looks like this with one of the products featured. Of course, we need to uh, relink this. And we still have all the products, which is a good thing. Here's a featured product, blog posts. So it's a matter of uh, changing content now. But that's also what you can do. So let's customize it really quick. Uh, I go to the customizer or I can customize this. Let me show you really quick how. I can go to the menu and I can select our main menu. There it is. Publish. Close. Then I can go to Elementor. I can adjust the information, click over here. So I go over here to the style, then I can change this to something else. But then I need to change the background also. So let's grab this background, click over here. Go to the background color, paste it in the hover, nothing. So it stays like that. You can also change the text when we hover over it. Here we can adjust things. We can change the amount of columns. So let's say four and then eight products to show. Okay, publish. Then I close this. And then I can go to the customizer and what I can say is, hey, import 
settings I had. So I go to general, manage options. I go to the downloads. Drag it over here. Import customizations. Okay. Click over here. Bring this back to main. Click over here or over here. Design font color white. I go back to the home page. Now it uses the colors of my website. Publish. Close. Uh, let's go back to the customizer because it's not grabbing my menu. Main menu. So let's take a look at the main menu. It's probably added. So what I can do, I can go to the menus. Main menu. Yeah. Okay. Get rid of this. This. this block. All those, all those links are already over here. So PlayStation, Xbox, contact us. This is perfect. And now it's a matter of adjusting the information. So it's a framework, it's a starter site, and now we can adjust all the information over here. And then you have a good looking website. Also over here, um, I go to the customizer. Over here, edit. I can get rid of all the upper widgets. Perfect. So I've shown you how you can create this website yourself or how to import the, the pre-made Elementor homepage or use a starter template and then still use your own settings. So there are three ways on how you can do this. And now you can adjust this information. And if you're not happy, I showed you how to create a backup. So what I can do, I can go to all in one WB migration, import, and then I can go to downloads, go to the WordPress file, import it over here, finish. Now, if I go to the website, I go to the customizer, go to general layout, make it one pixel bigger, one smaller, click on publish. I just need to publish the, the customizer and then everything looks great again. So now it's back to the way it was. And now ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a day and age where we use AI. So let's talk about ChatGPT and how you can implement it in your website for a lot of different things. So let's talk about that. So if I go to my website and I go to one of the products, this one, for instance, I can copy this You can see there's no short description. There is a long description, but let's see what ChatGPT can do. Write me a long description about the PlayStation 5 console disc version. Write it in a chill and fun way. Hit enter. Look at this. It's like the Brad Pitt of gaming consoles, but way more affordable. And that's what I like about ChatGPT. You can not only ask them for a text, but also tell them, tell him, tell it, it how to write it in a fun way, a chill way. So that's what I uh, like about ChatGPT. So there it is. I copy this whole area. Copy. I uh, edit the product. And for me, the, the long description is more for the, for the, the search results than for people to really read it. But look at that. So what I also can do, 
write me a short or let's copy it. Paste it, write me a short description about the PlayStation 5 console, write it in a chill and fun way in maximum four lines in a maximum maximum of four lines. I don't know if that English is correct, but hey, chat GPT probably understands me. So there you go. And I can say make it shorter. Perfect. Copy it. Short description. Update. View the product. And there I go. Long description. Okay. Let's take it to the next level. I go to the back end. Plugins. Add new. And I search for AI power. We can integrate ChatGPT in our website. I click on install now. It's from Sonol Sahin. Install now. Activate. I can go through all the products one by one. Or I can just install this. And what I want to do, optimize WooCommerce products. Then I need to have my OpenAI API key. Get your API key. Click over here. I can create a new one. And it is for... Game con consoles.com, create a secret key, copy it, paste it. Your API key is valid. Click on next to proceed. What do I want to do? Product titles, descriptions, short descriptions, meta descriptions, and product tags. All of them. Adjust your prompt. Do you want to use your own prompt? Yes. On the other hand, no, save it. Get ready to optimize your products. Go to the products page. Okay, let's go over here. I scroll down all the way. Right, original title, PlayStation 5 uh, charging station. And I say, you know what? Generate everything for me. It will take some time. Meanwhile, let me take a look at, uh, copy this, take a look at the website. Let me close this and close this. And I search for this controller. There it is. Supercharger PlayStation 5 controllers. No content right now that that's being generated. This can take some time. I'll show you how much time it took. It took three minutes. Now I can copy and paste all this stuff over here, or I just save it. Look at this PlayStation five controller at the tags. And now here, all those tags, how awesome is that? So now before it looked like this, supercharger PlayStation tags, no description. And now voila. I still can go to chat.openai, make this text shorter. And then copy this. Paste it here. You see it's shorter. Update. Bam. Now it is shorter. So Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say 40 words. So I want to have a maximum of 40 words for every uh, short description. Then I can go to the back end to AI settings, to WooCommerce, use custom prompt, and I go for the short description, use a maximum of 40 words, save it. Now I go to all my products one by one. I 
scroll down. And I click on generate. And now it will create a short description with a maximum of 40 words. And it took less than 20 seconds. Save it. View the product. And there it is. One, two, three, four, five. 36 words. How amazing is this? There you go. So it's a matter of doing this for all products. So what I prefer, go to the products, hold command, click, 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 click. And I like to, to always go all in with this. So I want to open all the products I have. Control tab, select everything, generate. Twenty seconds or sixteen seconds. Save it. Control tab. Next. Click, 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 click. Generate. And it's creating unique content. Twenty seconds. Save it. Next. And that's how you go through all the products. And then in a super short amount of time, you can make the content of your website of every product so much better thanks to AI. And since we're working with ChatGPT, we can also do this. We go to chat.openai.com and I go to privacy policy and I ask, write me a privacy policy page for a e-commerce website based in the United States. Enter. Well, thank you, AI. I copy this. I go to the website. I edit the page and I paste it. And I say game consoles. It is July 11. Update. Okay. Next. Terms and conditions. Write me a Terms and conditions page for an e-commerce website based in the United States. And that's how we roll. So it will be generated over here. And then I can do the same thing with all those pages. And but I still uh, I suggest you you hire a lawyer to uh, make sure everything is uh, all right, or you do some deep uh, investigation on, in, on the internet on how to uh, make this work for your area, because every area is different and that's why I cannot give you one size fits all solution on this. I want to end with the, the following, a CSS trick. If I go to a product, the add to cart button is green. I want to do the same, but over here, if I go to the customizer, and I go to WooCommerce, Product Archives, scroll down, Card Options, Add to Card button. We go to Design. Here's the, the button text. So we can change that, for instance, to green. But I want the background to be green. How can I fix that? We can use some CSS. So right mouse click over here, not on the text, but over here. Inspect using Google Chrome. Okay. This area is selected. So what I do over here, what I try to do over here, I say enter and I say background 
hashtag 000. And what you see, this area becomes dark. That's what I want. So what I do now, I can also click over here, make it now green. Okay. I can copy this whole area. Let's see, including this area. Copy it, close it. If I refresh the page, it's gone again. I go to the customizer and I paste that exact CSS code, additional CSS. I paste it and now it's this color. But I only added a background, so all this stuff I don't need that. And I also want to see if I need this area. So if I remove this and this stays green, then I'm happy. But if I hover over it, it becomes orange and a black, uh, white background. How can I fix that? Well, I can copy this, paste it, and after the A, the points, hover. And then I want to make this color a bit darker. So how can I do that? I go back and I go to the colors. I can search for green and a bit darker green. Copy the color, but then make it white again. Then I scroll down again to the CSS. And I paste this. So now when I hover over it, it becomes darker. Maybe a bit too dark, but you can make it lighter. And I also want to get rid of that orange color of the text. So I go back and I go to the WooCommerce archive, product archive, card options, design, button text. It should always be white. Also, when you hover over it like that. And if I want to, I can click over here, grab the same, same green color. Copy it, and in that way, um, make it look better. Perfect. So now, it looks like that. I think it's too bright, but I can make it less bright. I want to congratulate you with your website. Man, what you have achieved is amazing, and good luck with selling products on the internet. And this is the end of the tutorial, but at the same time, there's so much more that you can learn in order to improve your website and make it better. So let me talk about a few things that you can do in order to make your website better. The first one is you can follow a rank map tutorial that will enable you to optimize your website for the search results. So go to the internet, to YouTube and go for rank, rank map tutorial. And there's mine. And there you can learn step by step how to optimize your website. What else? I've been talking about uh, building an email list. If you want to learn how to do that, go for ConvertKit Tutorial 30. And there I show you how to build an email list. Two and a half hours. If you want to do something with affiliate marketing, man, I told I told about I talked about it and I love it. Selling other people's products and when you sell them, you get a commission, you're not a help desk. No obligation anymore. If you want to learn that, go for affiliate marketing 30. Hit enter. And I have a few tutorials. This is my most recent one, four hours and 45 minutes. I have multiple income streams. It's it's amazing what you can do with affiliate marketing. What else? If you want to create all the other pages in your website uh, using Elementor, search for WordPress tutorial 30. And there you have one from 2023. My best uh, viewed um, organic video so far, four hours where I talk only about Elementor and how to create uh, beautiful pages using Elementor with the container builder. So feel free to watch that one. And then I want to congratulate you again on achieving the results you have achieved. Good luck with your website and I hope you'll make a lot of sales. Feel free to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming tutorials. And then I hope you have a great day and a great journey with your website. Bye-bye.